Good morning, London and all of our London Spitfire fans. Thank you very much for tuning into this co-stream. Of course, thanks to Overwatch League for allowing great things like this to happen. We have got another fantastic fan event going on live in London right now, and we're going to be bringing you all of the action for the London Spitfire versus the Chengdu Hunters. I'm, of course, Matt Pixie Carroll. Joining me here is Kevin Everwalker. We're going to be saying hi to Ian in just a couple of minutes as well. He is our man on the ground in London with the fans from Hangar 9. I'm excited for today. Absolutely, we've got a very exciting match to go and, uh, and cast as well to bring to all the London fans. Shout out to Hangar 9, of course, for being great fans out there, putting everything together for London Spitfire, the Overwatch League, and we're nearly there. We're nearly at the playoff stage now. London Spitfire have got one more regular season match to go before they head into the playoffs, of course, in the APAC region, and can't wait to be bringing that action to you guys soon. And I think it's going to be a pretty uh, a pretty cool kind of day for exactly that reason. Like, it's just, it's that, it's that one last match before we get there. Like, we can't actually change the seeding here this is more just going to be like what kind of form is the team in I, I feel like we're just kind of here to have like a bit of a day of it you know have yeah. a bit of fun with this one there isn't that same like edge of the seat tension you know there's not a whole lot on the line you can just kind of chill out and enjoy what we hope is going to be a good game of overwatch yeah you know there's no stress about it today at all london fans this is going to just be a good time we're going to have a great game it's going to be a very decent competitive game as well new meta as well a lot of fresh things we haven't had a lot of chance yeah. to see what's happening in the apex side of things we've got a little bit of action over towards na today in terms of what teams are doing on the current pass so i think london this is a very good opportunity to see how the team is going to be performing as we start heading into playoffs and attempting to make that top two run happen to make it even deeper into a potential grand finals run. And of course, if you're tuning into the co stream for the first time, uh, then go ahead and subscribe. Why not? You know, it doesn't hurt anyone. In fact, it helps a lot of people if you think that this is going to be your kind of scene. There's plenty more of these coming up. Uh, I think this is now the second one that London have done so far. So if you're a London fan in particular, then, well, hey, hit the subscribe button. You'll get the whole gamut of London games. Yeah, go ahead and check out the Viral Nation link as well to go over to the Overwatch League channel. Make sure you subscribe there and support them. Again, big shouts to Overwatch League for being able to sponsor this as we move forward through the tournament and heading into all of our final regular season games. Um, the Overwatch League... 2020 season is nearing its conclusion, yeah. we're nearing the business end now. We're getting towards the serious kind of stuff. So, you know, what a way to kind of end the regular season with a very fun kind of game, with a very good game before we start heading into what will be some very exciting matches in the future. That's kind of what this is, right? It's, uh, it's, it's the breath before the plunge, you know. It, it's our last chance to just have... Uh, have a normal regular season game and again like it's one that doesn't have massive stakes like yeah there's still that layer of like what form is the spitfire actually in coming into playoffs that's maybe the the one question that'll be on fans minds as they watch this match progress but outside of that like there's no major difference between winning and losing here inherently right. and even if things don't look amazing today there's still time to still prepare for the playoffs like there's still a lot of space ahead of them and i think we're just here to have a chilled out time and if i'm not mistaken i think we're ready to uh say hi to ian uh with the uh fans on the ground in london so let's go over to them and see how things are happening at what i believe is about 8 30 in the morning <laughs> Here we are again for our massive watch party. It is London Spitfire, as Avril and Pixie just said, against Chengdu Hunters. This is nothing to play with. This is playoff time, baby. This is where it gets really serious. Forget what happened in the season. It is all to play for. It is do or die. Is it do? We think it's do, though, right? Yeah. 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 The great thing about this is, like I said, we are live. Anything could happen here in London. Thanks again to the guys over in New Zealand. We're looking forward to getting stuck into the action. But before we do, let's have a chat with some of our wonderful Spitfire fans, starting with Isabella. Would you like to make your way up to the microphone, Isabella? Hi. Now, just before we went live there, you told me your full name, and uh, it is... Yeah. <laughs> It's a tough one, so yeah. I'm going to let you pronounce it just for anybody watching. Just in case you need to ever speak to Isabella in the future and you want to get it right. So let's do this. So, Isabella, Maria Teresa, Antonietta, Federica, Giuseppina, Rita, Librando. So one name for every day of the week. You're welcome. Wow, that is a name. Does anybody want to have a go at doing that? No? No. <laughs> Isabella, this yes. is a, a massive, massive match here. Um, how are you feeling about it? Are you feeling confident? I am kind of confident. I mean, I support Spitfire as much as I can. Um, I think every experience is a learning experience. I mean, we're a young team and new guys, and they've been doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we just need to, as fans, stick behind them, be positive, and just see what happens. Does this new blood 
have the potential to really gel together at crunch time here in the playoffs. So let's just put the regular season in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. Are you optimistic? Do we have what it takes? Yeah, I mean, I've seen some really incredible individual plays. I think it's just spending more time with your team, spending more time getting to know each other. And once they've clicked and once they can kind of read their future moves, I think that will be unstoppable. When you look back on the season, how would you sum it up? <laughs> is, that, is that a word? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been tough, but I think it's about remaining positive and it's about, you know, learning from your experiences. And I think they have. Mm. Now, let's talk about our opponents this morning. It is bright and early, by the way. It is just gone 20 to 10 London time. So thank you on your Friday for joining us. We really appreciate that. Last time we did this it was on a Saturday. So, yeah, dedicated. I like that. That's proper Spitfire fans right there. Um, who do you want to see the most from on our team? If we're going to pop off, who really needs to pop off to get it done over Chengdu? I mean, I want to see some, some glister plays. Yeah. I want to see yeah. some, some popping off from him. Because when he pops off... He pops, a, it, he pops off. Like he, a he pops off. <laughs> gone. <laughs> so, sure. no, I'd like to see some strong glister plays, but the only way to get strong glister plays is for the team to work together and to have great healing and to have great tanks. So, everybody needs to work together as a team. Not a one man team? Nope. How would you like to win? Some amazing limited edition swag right now, isn't it? Yes. And when I say a limited edition, I mean, can we get a big ooh when I bring this up in front of the camera right now? Look at this. Ooh! ooh. Yes. Now, this. It even says yes, it's high on the back. Hashtag. Now, this is um, very rare. We have okay. three of them available to give away here this morning in London. Okay. And all you have to do is answer one simple question. You okay. ready? Yes. Shanghai Dragons. Which was the only team to beat Shanghai Dragons in the inaugural Overwatch League season? Is it London Spitfire? <laughs> No, he keeps the hat. Oh my Nobody God. beat Shanghai oh. Dragons. Trick ah. question, trick question. I'm not good at trick questions. It's a trick question. I, I, I threw a trick question. Should, should we give the hat? Yeah. You can have just the hat. I'm nice. Just because I'm you nice. You are nice. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything you'd like to say before you go and sit down? Good luck. I love being with you guys. And um, I'm excited. Let's, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Thanks, Isabella. Penny, would you like to make your way up? Give it up for Penny, the man with me. I, I love your style. I was just saying, Penny, I love your swag. Um, you know, I is... try, even though it's cheap stuff from Asda, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to George, other brands available. Um, so, welcome to the show, Penny. It is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you heard Isabella. She's sounding pretty, uh, well, I'm going to say, hesitantly confident about this morning but it is do or die if you guys want to continue supporting the team that you love the lads have to get it done this morning how are you feeling um there's a chance i mean stranger things have happened mm -hmm. i mean boston won yesterday and no one predicted <laughs> that like there's so much controversy over that so i mean there's, there's a chance things can happen yeah like we just said that we need to see some players popping off Yes. Who is your, when you, when you wake up in the morning ahead of a match, mm. who are you thinking about the most? Who is it you want to see go out there and do the business? Uh, I'm going to keep it 100. Glister. Like, yeah. he's even my wallpaper. He's like my idol. Glister's your wallpaper on your phone? Yeah. Can we see this? Yeah, Can sure. we get a tight of this? Glister, because Glister's going to want to watch this on demand. Just, this is the sort of level of fans you have, Glister. So check this out. Can we get a tight of that? Can we? Look at that. <laughs> like, he's my idol. He pops off every week. So, uh, you know. What is it about Glist that you love so much? That you can just keep clicking heads almost very consistently. <laughs> so, like, as a DPS, I kind of want to embody that myself, so. Yeah. So you play like yourself? A fair amount, yeah. Would you compare your style of play to Glister? Are you clicking heads like Glister? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, if the, moon, if the moon's a lion and everything. We, we, were, we were just having a, a brief chat just before we went live over a nice little coffee here. Yeah. And we were talking about the fact that we are British, so we're very honest. Um, if you were to reflect in a completely honest manner, like I said, we're British, we like to be honest, um, about the season so far, the London Spitfire, how would you sum it up? It's been entertaining, but like, it's, it's not as good as it could have been. Mm. To be fair though, we are a new team, so for a new team, they are doing pretty well. They are putting up a fight, so. Were you anxious when there was 
the, when the reset button was hit and the, the new blood came in, are you excited about that? Because you've got to give prospects time to grow into a team and get to know each other and gel and click. It's very rare that that happens just immediately out of, yeah. out of the blue, isn't it? I was scared and hesitant at first because, like you said, we don't know who these players are. We don't know like what their skills are. But then their first game was against NY and they did put up quite a good fight. And I was like, okay, this, this squad has potential. They, can, yeah. they might be able to like, go right all the way. And got then, fire. Yeah, I and think, then it didn't. So. I mean, well, we're still in the playoffs. Oh, we're obviously we're in, in playoffs. playoffs. We're in playoffs. Um, it, to get through Chengdu, it's going to be it's going to be tough. But give us some predictions of what we can expect. Let's, let's just let's let Penny predict the future. Oh. In for a penny, out for a pound. <laughs> let's. Um, that just. I mean, I didn't plan that. Sorry, no, I apologize. Uh, predictions. I, yeah. Honestly, I don't think I could predict it because Chung, Chengdu is so weird that. For all we know, we might just three over them, or we're gonna get stalled out by a ball for like 20 minutes on like Helios or something. <laughs> so anything could happen. So. Do you know what else could happen? You could win yourself a limited edition blue cap. Woo! <laughs> um, the thing is, I've really taken the heat off to begin with here because I give them away even if you get the question wrong. So I'm feeling a bit uh, anxious about this. I did write a couple of questions down ready for our quiz right here this morning. Are you ready? Do you think you've got enough knowledge? When it comes to the Overwatch League, how would you rank your knowledge? Bronze. <laughs> like, bronze. sub 100 bronze. <laughs> it's not too bad. Uh, how many players were on the London Spitfire roster that won the championship in 2018? Was it A, 5, B, 6, or C, 7? On the winning roster? Mm hmm so the team that played the match that won, or like the entire roster? Statman, what are we going for? The entire roster. Well, it was none of them. It was like 20 plus, wasn't it? Options <laughs> there. See, now I'm confused. We're going to we're gonna have to bring my man up to the, to the front of the stage. Come on, elbow. <laughs> Thank you. Elbow me, elbow me. Elbows. This, so so you so the entire roster of the London Spitfires throughout the entire season. <laughs> is 12 men, but the championship roster that won was seven. Oh, damn, I was wrong. Penny, are you confident with his answer there? I yeah. can name the players if you would like. Name them, name them, name them. Uh, Prophet, Bird Ring, Gesture, Fury, Nuss, Bedotion, and Closer. Wow, look All at seven Can we give it up for Slapman? <laughs> Taylor, 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 I want you to say that. Penny, either way, Take the cap because you deserve it. <laughs> that is limited edition. You're not going to get them anywhere else but a London Spitfire party here in London. Round of applause again for Penny Taylor. As you are here, I promised the gaffer here that I wouldn't call you the stat man, but I've just done it. You are the stat man. Your knowledge of the Overwatch League is encyclopedic. Um, how did you fall in love with this? When did it all start for you? Um, so I got, the, I got a new gaming PC. Um, Woo! Yeah, lovely. <laughs> I love it. Give it up for technology. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I brought Overwatch with it, and I've just fell in love with the game ever since. Mm. And then when Overwatch League came out, I was completely enthralled by it. We had a team of our own. I was never a fan of normal sports, so esports is much better, yep. in my opinion. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I just fell in love with it, and I've been watching ever since. So obviously when the league launched, you are looking at this wide selection of teams and is, is, did you choose London because you're from the UK or was there something about that team that really stood out to you? I just picked them because it was the UK, got yeah. to support the, the boys in blue. Home oh, blood. Yeah. So you saw them at their absolute height of glory yes. in 2018. You just pretty much listed the entire roster <laughs> here in front of everybody. Um, and now you've seen them not do so well this season. How would you compare those two different rosters? Um, um, <laughs> there, were, there were bright spots for our roster now. Um, there were bright spots um, back in the day. And we got lucky mm -hmm. season one. They were great players, don't get me wrong. They are brilliant, brilliant players, but we definitely got a very lucky meta. Sometimes that, you need a bit of luck, right? Yeah, we got a very lucky meta that meant that we could have Bird Ring and Profit both playing their best roles, and we just got a good meta for us. So I think it's possible again. We've got quite a good meta going forwards. I mean, we can have Babel on the Widow, we can have Glister on the Tracer. So it's, it's, there are definitely bright spots. Which players on the wallpaper of your phone? 
I don't have a player on my wall, on my phone. Right. On my computer, however, uh, all right. I have Sanguinar. Ah, OK. Oh. Do you know what I think we should do, by the way? Because when we're all celebrating at the end of this morning, because we've just smashed the hunters, right? I think we should all change our wallpapers to Spitfire players. Are we all cool with that? Forget your dogs, cats, family members, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. Uh, we're going to players. How are you feeling tonight? Because you, you obviously, you know your stuff. What are our chances, Statman? Oof. Um, if we pull together and we really, really go out there, I say we've got a 40% chance. 40%? How yeah. Do we, oh, we need to up it to 60. Who are you <laughs> wanting to see pop off tonight? I feel like we need, we need Glister to pop off straight away, uh, but I think we need everybody else to really step up their game to push them just that bit mm -hmm. further. We need the space for Glister to be able to pop off. Well, I'm going to push you that little bit further and ask for a prediction. Oof. We're going to write this down, everybody. I want a full-on prediction here. What do we think? I think it's going to be, and this is a hopeful prediction, 3-1 London Spitfires. Yeah. I like that. Soundman, if, if I ask each member of our audience for a prediction and they shout it pretty loudly, will you be able to hear it? Yes, we're going to go with yes. All right, so you stay there. Prediction? 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. Prediction? 3-2. Three, 3-2. Two. Three, 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 three, two. Three, one. Three, one. Three, one. And I'm going to go 3-2. Um, are you ready to try and win yourself? You've already won the cap because you don't want to know what the, the, the question I prepared was? What? Name three members of the roster that won the championship. <laughs> was the question that I prepared, so do it. Uh, fury, gesture, profit. He's got himself a cap. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we all know what's about to happen. Well, in about 15 minutes time, just under, it's going to be 3-2 to London Spitfire because these guys said it. Um, that is it from us for now. We will be joining the live watch party here in London again very shortly. But let's get stuck into some more analysis in New Zealand with Avril and Pixie. Give it up for Avril and Pixie! <laughs> All right, cheers, Ian, and uh, cheers, everybody who took their uh, planes, trains, and automobiles to get down there at 9 in the morning. Or not even 9 in the morning yet. That's genuinely impressive. Uh, I can barely get up before 11, uh, and that's on a good day. Uh, bad days, I got up like an hour ago, so... Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is, this is, this is, you're gonna it, be, yeah, you know, fresh you're, out of bed. You'll be up uh, this is all by natural. the time you get the same time that I'll be currently get. fully awake and exactly. alert. <laughs> at 9am on Saturday morning our time. And, and props to the fans, by the way, because this is actually the only game today. The, as yeah. far as, you know, APAC games go, as far as Overwatch League games go, this is this is the one. There's just the one APAC game. Single game. And then it's, that's it. There's no <laughs> other games today. You're just here for... I don't know, like, maybe someone bought, like, some like a, a set of snakes and ladders for them to play afterwards yeah. or something. Like, it's a lot of... It's just Chengdu versus, versus London Spitfire today. So, you know, all eyes on the two teams, all eyes on this is our... Uh, first look at these guys in the new patch as well. Again, we got a little bit of a preview today. Some earlier matches did happen in the Overwatch League. Um, you know, we're moments away now from actually heading into that very, well, potentially very exciting match. And we heard a lot of predictions out there. No one said 3-0, by the way. I think that's maybe a possibility that people need to think about. You know what? Because... You know what? 3-0. There you go. Um, what, what they're going to be playing, how they're going to be playing those things. So, you know, the results can vary quite widely, often beyond your own performance. London can have a great game, but Chengdu's game themselves can be a big deciding factor. Look, if mm -hmm. they play extremely well, if they do something very crazy with the meta in terms of something, maybe they've discovered something that other teams haven't. That's kind of what the Chengdu Hunters are known for. Yeah. That could be a bit of a spanner in the works, but otherwise, depending on the preparation, depending on, you know, where your star players are going to be, a lot of people mention Glister for good reason. I, in my personal belief, is that he is the best player on that team. Of the 12-man roster currently for London Spitfire, he is the one that stands out number one above the rest in my eyes. If there's one person that's going to be leading the charge to victory today, it will be on his shoulders for sure, mm -hmm. supported, I'm sure, very well by the other five. Yeah, the other five. I like how the <laughs> Glister and the other five. Fair enough. So uh, when you said that wallpaper later today, you can you can either choose Glister or any one of the other five. Uh, it's actually more than that. Cause they it's a living. It's actually debate. a living. It's actually quite a few people. Uh, and I, I, I don't know. I, I, it looked like there was maybe roughly 11 people at that meetup, at least that we could see. So in theory, one member for each person's uh, screensaver. 
and just go through the history, you know, the go whole... through the ex-players as well uh, for so all the players. A, that that's a deep well if you really, if you really uh, want to pull water from that one. You know, and you can go and just keep going. Go to the British Hurricane as well. Go mm. through every mm. single player that's ever been on that roster. Uh, all the way down. Don't stop. Don't stop with the players. Go through the staff as well. Start getting into the coaches, every, yeah. the managers. You know, <laughs> all the way in. A lot staff. of wallpapers there. A lot um, of wallpapers. And. Yeah, and then and then don't stop there. Then just start going to Cloud Nine players all the way back. All the way. <laughs> start going into like other Cloud Nine teams in other games. Do just the whole start everything. Start going yeah. into uh, Cloud Nine Kong. Do it was back in the day. Like, yeah. yeah, that was the original <sighs> London Spitfire roster, Boy. wasn't it? And they actually did have twelve original members. Like I think, yeah, maybe they did only have seven at the end of the inaugural season, but they actually had twelve members at the start of the season because I remember they combined Cloud9 Kondu with mm. GC Busan at the time so they had just a lot of players and there was maybe a, a few players that came through not on those teams like I believe Fury was not one of the players that came through on either of those two teams and Fury ended up being one of the better players so that was a, quite a nice surprise at the time as well so yeah, uh, this team has certainly mm -hmm. had remember it's way back in like the Jurassic period where Shawfall was on Cloud9 I think once upon a time Adam just oh, you go people. really far back. Then I'm like, I'm like, like I said, like, like I'm talking like Jurassic talking period. I'm talking like, nine. I'm talking like beta. Yeah, <laughs> that, was before, that was before the media fell that was uh, <laughs> and eliminated all of those NA players out of contention. Uh, I mean, Shaw Four didn't get to play. He doesn't play. Yeah. He, is he doesn't get play time anymore? I'm not too no. sure. Anyway, not too sure for. Isn't really. That's not who we're here to talk about. Anyway. No, not at it all. Doesn't really matter. It's not who we're here for. Shaw uh, Four. <laughs> So London versus Chengdu. It's going to be interesting because, again, I, I don't know what Chengdu are going to bring to the table. I don't really even know what London will bring to the table for the new patch because we've seen now... A lot well, of given that it's be... like 9 o'clock in the morning, I am certainly hoping like some bacon and eggs. Uh... English breakfast, as it happens. Local time? I don't know. We'll see. Because, you know, <laughs> because what we can expect now is potentially, you know, we've seen some teams already put some DPS players on the tank position. We've seen players now, if you want to do, if you do want to move into the kind of Roadhog meta, you are putting one of your DPS players potentially on that Roadhog, or else you have a flex tank. You can go double flex tank. You might have a sort of composition that has both Burner and also uh, Cleston on the roster at the same time mm -hmm. as a starting roster. That would give you double flex tank. You can move one of your DPSs there. I'm fairly certain that you're gonna have a you're definitely gonna have glister on potentially the ash here that would make a lot of sense ash is still very prominent in the current meta so um yeah that that's that's all certainly viable um don't know if shui is going to be there hopefully burner will i remember last we did the coast stream mm -hmm. versus shanghai dragons burner wasn't there for any no, of the maps so no. uh, again he's probably up there in terms of the players that i really consider to be the best mm -hmm. in this particular squad so hopefully burner does get to play today that would certainly give the team a lot to work with personally i would like to see shui but that is because i'm heavily biased and uh shui uh once upon a time played in pacific so just kind of holding the torch high for that one still I mean, also, I mean, in that same vein, I should be hoping for Bacon Jack, but that's a bit of a different thing. And also is very unlikely. And uh, most of these players played in Contenders Korea, which we currently cast now. Yeah. So that's where my there's affiliations that, there's currently that too. lie. There's that too. I don't remember anything I cast for Contenders Korea. As far as I know, that this is the start of my career. Start right in. Korea is Tell them who. Start. Never heard of them. Um, every, must everything be new. that happened before that is that was all practice, really. That's why I can't um, even remember who Shaw for I used to play for, because there was I, I don't know I, too far back. Don't remember. Nine, as we nothing. Said, nothing. Man. Nothing registers pre KR. Well, look, uh, the teams are still. Going to be heading to match. We yeah. have got a bit of time to play with here, guys. A little under 10 be, minutes still. We're not going to be actually getting into match for, like you said, a little bit under 10 minutes before the actual Overwatch League broadcast. So it's actually so kick off. a variety show now for the next few minutes. Um, I'm going to juggle. Uh, Kevin is going to gotta, sing I Dreamed a Dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of all that, we'll probably still have another you know, minute or so to kill. So, uh, you know, looking forward to that. You got that to come up. I honestly don't even think I would have objects to try and juggle. Like, I've got, like, my phone. I wouldn't want to try with that. That would go very poorly. Mm, over concrete, preferably. So, <laughs> sit tight, guys. Sit tight Juggling for the concrete. match to get into action. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. In fact, sit extremely tight. Uh, don't go anywhere at all for the next 7 minutes and 48 seconds. So that's what we're looking at about now. Uh, so, you know, buckle in. Stay buckled. Don't unbuckle. You better be buckled. 
I want you, if you are live at the venue right now, I want nice. you to be eating a buckled breakfast. I hope everyone does have a nice breakfast. I really do. It actually made me kind of want breakfast because yeah. I was seeing like a few things getting served and like, I don't know, my breakfast was like toast and a coffee. It was pretty, pretty middling or things because we were out of banana, so I couldn't even have like a banana with it. Wow. I know. It was really brutal this morning. That's rough. Tough day. I say this morning, I've, we, as we've previously established, I got up an hour ago. So, you know, I had very quick toast and coffee. Well, you're already on UK time. You're yeah, I'm, UK I'm time. ready to go. Yeah. I got up really early. I'm so actually right on time. You pretend, if you pretend you're actually <laughs> UK time right now, you've done it exceptionally well. I've nailed it, frankly. So, uh, props to you there. Uh, I'm actually, I'm not just on UK time. I'm on all the time, all the time. <laughs> Right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. So, um, okay. So, again, if people are wondering what, um, how things are going to be looking in the future as well for London Spitfire, all seven teams in the APAC region are going to be making it to playoffs. And then mm -hmm. from there, only the top two teams will actually make it to the finals, which is going to be held. Yeah. Uh, I think it might be tried somewhere in, somewhere in Asia. It'll be, right. it'll be hosted in APAC where the top two NA teams will be there as well. So that's kind of how the playoffs journey is going to go of the seven teams. All the seedings have already been determined yep. off of regular season results. That's why we kind of come into this one saying, look, at the end of the day, this is just going to be a very uh, entertaining match. It's going to be a good match to watch and hopefully just a lot of fun in general. Yeah. Seedings aren't going to change based off of this particular match, mm -hmm. but it's still going to be one you want to win anyway just for that extra confidence boost to make sure that you're feeling good heading into playoffs, to make sure you're getting that early look into a little bit of a preview mm -hmm. into the team as well as we start to move into the actual real playoffs of the Overwatch League 2020 season to see what's going to happen here because mm -hmm. this is uh, a real potential for a bit of shake-up to happen. Shocker obviously looking still pretty good in NA, but mm -hmm. Philly Fusion beat them not that long ago in a very convincing sort of result. So heading into a sort of new meta for playoffs is what well. anything can happen. Everyone yeah. in 2018. Oh, meta. yeah. At London Spitfire in that particular playoffs had an extremely good run. They had that kind of playoffs buff, so that can still happen now oh, yeah. as well as we start to head into important games. London can certainly find a bit of a buff there and uh, really switch on their important pieces. Like mm -hmm. you sort of mentioned, the important members coming through as well they got a generally fairly good well-rounded team in terms of individual players yeah i just think they i think the one thing that this team really needed this year was to be able to have a lot of time together to really be able to gel so hopefully they've been able to do that mm -hmm. and as we start to head into this match of future matches we'll be able to see the result of it and that's the thing I, like by the nature of it because all these teams are going to be able to get into playoffs like in a sense there's no such thing as too late until you're fully out of the tournament which does mean there's still time so yeah we're looking for a bit of a bit of a chilled out kind of match today maybe uh you know the beginning of a change in fortunes for London, if we're if we're speaking quite frankly, um, and you know the majority of the show is is going to be me talking about breakfast. So I hope you're looking forward to that. We're going to go uh, to a couple of minutes of break uh, just before we get stuck into the top of the match. So I'm um, looking forward to that one. Don't go anywhere.
I hope you took that time to absolutely scarf down your bacon and eggs. Uh, and uh, if you're just watching on YouTube as well, then I hope you took that time to like make some bacon and eggs that you can now proceed to eat during the start of the match. Uh, we'll try not to make it too exciting so that you don't accidentally spit out your breakfast out of uh, sheer excitement. Yeah, spit breakfast. Spit fire, not breakfast today. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really the message. And I don't know why you're going to have to get it down very quickly. You can take the time. You'll think, you know, slowly take it through if you want to. Uh, plenty of games to get through. Plenty of maps to get through. So plenty of opportunities to just enjoy your meal, I guess, but don't eat it too slow, maybe? No, uh, yeah, don't cold. eat it too slow, because then it's cold. It's possible to over-enjoy your breakfast, and then actually it's too cold by the time you get to right, the end right, of it. Of That's always the tough thing. I always find that when I, like, if I go out for breakfast, if you get, like, the full breakfast, you need to decide which part of that breakfast you're okay with eating cold, because you're not going to get to all of it while it's hot. For me, it's the toast. Because I, I, this might be weird, but I don't like to put anything on my toast when I have a full English breakfast. It's just bland. It's just plain bland. toast. And that's also maybe why I don't mind having it cold, because I know it's already going to suck, because it's just plain toast. Maybe with butter on it. Weird. I don't know. Cold buttered toast. What a strange... That's how I like to start my day. Strange thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh boys, oh boy. Yeah, so we're again just a couple of minutes out from getting fully stuck into the game, and uh, I think we've kind of pretty fairly set the scene here. Yeah. Look, it's, there's no two ways about it. Like, the seeds can't change. It's seventh place APAC team versus sixth place APAC team. We've had that that extra bit of change. Yeah. Uh, you know, a bit of a shake up in the meta. There could be some some real big shifts. Could be some crazy things still to happen, or maybe not. Like, we might just see a more or less bog standard game of Overwatch similar to what we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's still rated higher than Boston and Houston. So, yep, good good stuff. We got that. Um, and that was a pretty interesting game. Like, I don't know if you caught, <laughs> anybody caught the, the games earlier today as well, but we did actually have uh, Boston knocking out Houston Outlaws. Mm -hmm. So that's gone. That's done and dusted. That was a very surprise game as well. A lot of people maybe have not expected that match to have the result that it did, but it just goes to show that anything can still happen this late into the season. Certainly no one's completely out in the end pack region at least just yet so uh there it is we're going to be doing london spitfire chengdu hunters and then you know that's the only match of the day and then mm -hmm. in a later date we're going to be seeing some of those other games as well mm -hmm. for the overwatch league as we move our way through the apac division yeah a few more games tomorrow uh not quite sure exactly what time they are but i'm assuming that you're going to again times. need to need to get at up times and have a very <laughs> have a very uh quick bacon and eggs if you want to catch both of those ones tomorrow uh, but, I mean, do you really want to? Or do you want to just watch London Spitfire, you know? I mean, if you're a London Spitfire fan, you're... Then you're you would. London Spitfire, You'd, really, are Yeah, you? that's really the whole... That's the whole gimmick. And if you want to see those other games, you can head over to the Overwatch League channel to check those out. But, yeah, here we go. Here's your team, London. Here is your Spitfire roster. And, obviously, we will be seeing Glister on the starting lineup as predicted. Everything here pretty standard, although it's going to be playing up first. So, um... I don't know. This is going to be interesting. I, I do wonder what the exact composition that we're going to be seeing out of the team. No Krillin to start with either. Mm -hmm. Did see a little bit of Anna gameplay earlier today. So uh, Krillin, he's kind of known for that one. He's always probably a little bit more known for the Zenyatta, to be really honest with you. There's no double flex tank shenanigans going on here either. So you're not going to see Kliston in early. j Mac will still be in there. So I assume for map number one, perhaps we're not going to be seeing the Roadhog just yet. Still mm -hmm. opportunity to make roster adjustments and substitutions for later maps. Seeing if possible. Seeing uh, Bernard out the gate as uh, as well, which again is uh, it's just one of the things we noted was uh, at, the, at the very least last time we did this uh, a sort of noted absence. Mm -hmm. That's really all I had to add there. Yeah, and Thank I think you. this is going to be I think this is going to be important to the lineup as well. You want to have your all of your shot of of your star players mm -hmm. on at the same time. You want to make sure that all of your of your roster is really cylinders firing as we head into the competition. Chengdu hunters, and on this particular roster. Um, Molly is going to be an interesting one to look out yeah, for. Anna, okay, we yeah. did see Anna. We did see coming through as quite a strong pick earlier today. And Molly's quite well known for his Anna and Jimmu and Lee. Very flexible players mm -hmm. for their roster as well. So you know, perhaps if Widowmaker is more of a thing that we do see a little bit more Widowmaker gameplay. That's when Bacon Jack can sort of come in there. If we're going to be seeing a little bit of the double flex tank action, perhaps a main a, a man gets uh, subbed out for Elsa. That could potentially happen here as well. But otherwise, Options. yeah, pretty pretty standard. Mm -hmm. uh, Yvatel playing over Lingser as 
well so there's a bit of roster depth over for hunters both mm -hmm. teams really have a decent amount of roster depth but certainly if you are the london spitfire you've got 12 players there probably not going to see all 12 of them but i would say seven to eight of them you could see some substitutions happen yeah potentially and i think that's the other thing that is worth noting like you know while there's still a bit of openness potentially in terms of what teams actually choose to run and uh, and how like that's where we'll see roster changes happen if we are going to see them during the course of the series if people want to play one composition over another you've already kind of gone through some of the specifics of that also just want to throw it out there uh, i've talked about this before but i want to nominate leave for best name in the overwatch league purely because of the headline we got not too long ago leave returns beautiful <laughs> <sighs> almost as good as when you have names like although and another another <laughs> and all the basically everyone there needs to be like an also and an as well <laughs> And then also like Additionally. no one, someone, no one. Just do <laughs> Gen G are just there, responsible for some of the most interesting names that yeah. just <laughs> get like, them into a lot of trouble. Uh, which also, by the way, the team that Glister came from, so yeah. producing a decent amount of talent. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, plenty of uh, mix and match between that roster, Gen G, uh, also the Soul Dynasty, uh, who stole profit from us. So boo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've moved on. Yeah, I can uh, so yeah, so this particular matchup. Should be interesting. Seeing the starting rosters, I'd say nothing really standing out there except for, I guess, going to control earlier on, as we did see a condensed career as well. Uh, early control maps, you're not seeing the Roadhog come out just yet. So no, maybe so when much. we get to maps two and three and a little bit later on, that's mm -hmm. when that could come through. But also APAC meta might actually be a little bit different to NA meta. Maybe there's less focus on the Roadhog gameplay, less focus on the double flex tank in general. Mm -hmm. So you are still seeing the real, the actual main tank players come through and play their uh, regular roles in J Mac and Emo today, and I mean also like out of Glister as well. Like you've you've got you've got some just absolute hot fire DPS picks that you'd love to see get rolled out as well. Yeah. So like when we when we also talk about you know. Look, maybe the you know the APAC meta has room to be st ever so slightly different to the NA one, or perhaps even drastically different. Yeah. Like, let's let's not count out that possibility, especially when you consider that one of the two teams playing today is Chengdu. Uh, like, uh, that's the kind of room where we're kind of hoping uh, to within which we are hoping to see some of those really superstar picks for some of these really superstar players. We kick things off, of course, on Nepal. It's going to be a, a very important one for Glister because he's going up against two very strong DPS picks in terms of, we're looking at Leave and Jinmu. I think Leave in particular is one of the better DPS, especially in the APAC region. Super flexible, like we sort of mentioned. But we'll have to see how that all pans out and more as we head into map one oh, yeah. of Overwatch League. Uh, regular season, the final regular season game for the London Spitfire and Chengdu Hunters. This is going to be a very exciting one as we start out on uh, Shrine. Yeah. And uh, please, if you're not already, get hype. I know that me just saying it is a great way uh, to get you to get hype. But do please get hype. And uh, already just seeing some of the things that are being hovered here. I don't know how much of this is uh, necessarily serious, but I mean... Chengdu Hunter's hovering Wrecking Ball, like, that's not out of the question. That would be the most normal thing that Chengdu is going to do. <laughs> Among on the Wrecking Ball, what? That's a shocker. No, yeah. really, this is very standard play coming out from Chengdu. J Mac could be starting out things on the Ryan Burner. What is that that he's playing? Uh, Sigma. Is it a so Sigma. That's a double shield. And that's interesting because Sigma is nerfed on this patch. Yeah. So we'll see what he does. Opening scrap as well. You can see Among just kind of hanging around the side, trying to find an opportunity to move in, disrupt. Glister just chucks a pot shot his way, lets him know that he's not going to be able to just fly in without eating. A flashbang, and now Chengdu just kind of having to turtle up on this high ground here, try and layer some shots down onto the point that London have otherwise been able to take possession of. Among now going aggressive, trying to dislodge London. A lot of damage going down onto J Mac, and it has forced London Spitfire back just a tad. Chengdu trying to reoccupy that space, but they can't just hang around on the point the same way London can. So if they're not getting kills, they can't actually dislodge London. And now as Among goes down, point goes the way of London. So importantly, London Spitfire are playing all though onto the May. That's how you're going to be able to counter the Wrecking Ball. However, Glister does go down fairly early. No mercy over here, no resurrection. And well, Among's back into action with J Mac down. This might actually be a lost fight for London Spitfire as Chengdu look for. The cat. Yeah, a few percentage points accrued and uh, not a terrible uh, approach to begin with. They're really committing into this one, though. So Trying to use matrix. the... Uh, yeah, not sure about the amplification matrix. They were maybe hoping that with Glister back in the mix, they could get some damage through. Look, he got 
Jinmu with a headshot. I think it might be changing. Yeah, looks like it. Yep, so they'll now be moving on to a brawl composition. That makes a little bit more sense. Just throw in the Ant Matrix because, well, you've already got it and you're changing heroes anyway. And now we're seeing J-Make over towards the Winston. Honestly, he could have even decided to stay on the Ryan for this particular cop. Basically, everyone has changed though. So fresh ultimates for everybody. And they haven't lost that much time yeah. because they already have that 20%. Chengdu only now on 25 as Amon goes back in minefield and ready. Saguenar is relatively close to a sound barrier, and that's one of the major tools they actually have going for them here. Is the Spitfire kind of separated out here as J Max is going to go down and not quite enough at his back to keep him alive. It's looking like it's going to be a bit of a slow roll here for the London Spitfire. They've got to take this one on the chin, maybe try and get ultimates out of Chengdu. They're not going to be able to do that on this fight, though. So this is just more percentage into the hands of the hunters. And you do need to see a position where London are able to get these ultimates out of Chengdu. So you've got a couple gone already, four still available. Big one will be the Gravity on Surge. No one will be there to block it out. No Diva, no Sigma Burn has already changed off of that one. So you're just going to have to space properly. Same one, it does have a sound barrier though, so that will be V counter against Late Young, who is reasonably well known for Azaria in history. See how Chengdu manages this one. EMP is, Ooh. is available, but Jim is dead. Yeah, Glister making the change onto the Trace has already made his presence felt. Unfortunately, J Mac drilled down quite early in the fight again, but Sanguinar able to keep them alive throughout that grab. So that's at least a one for one, and Bernard staying alive as well. London trying to maybe keep the heat up here, but lacking that main tank, it's going to be a little bit tough for them. They've found late young, but they still need to dislodge a few more of these members. You can see A Monk causing a lot of hassle and opening leave up to just kind of free fire down the line at the Spitfire and Spitfire is still kind of sticking in this. This is now essentially a final fight. Oh, j -Max down now. Glister has to try and stay alive on the Spitfire, running out of members here. Back, out of, of time. That's two members down now, 4v6. And they gotta get some trades. I mean, the back cap, something, it like buys them a bit of time, but they need to be getting respawns through. That's Although EMP. EMP's getting committed here. Yeah, and still the kills coming through the way of the Hunters. Bernar is into the last, I've got to say, but he's just one man. No supports at his back. No ability to get out he's to a health back either. He's found Late Young as well. This could almost be enough. He does go down, but j -Max actually been able to re-enter now. London Spitfire might have just recovered. At the very least, they've forced Chengdu to back off and take pause. And that's with the cap as well, so that means yeah. the extra percentage points in there. Liberna, three kills, rescues the London Spitfire. And now, a couple of ultimates to play with. Chengdu Hunters. I have to put in a little bit more effort here to grab the point back in their control. And about 30 ish kind of percent. It should be now London Spitfire heading towards at 99. J Max should be going down. He does have Primal Rage available. We'll see if Leave can get anything done with the bomb. Because that's been one of the real humdingers for the Spitfire. They've lost J Max quite early in a lot of these. Now getting aggressive. Good manual hack onto A Mung. They need to keep him vulnerable. And the Pulse Bomb allows them to take him out. Although getting the final few shots in on that one. And now London, 80%. J Mac oh, had that Primal Rage running, but still just needs a bit too much pain. They've traded out with late young but leave is making his presence felt does get low has to duck for cover so so far all things even now no reds coming out of eveltal yet as we enter an official final fight they gotta pressure eveltal he's been a real problem against uh, the spitfire so far emp will get too high he still has the cold lessons so that's important jmac back on the wrecking ball so looking to find a little bit more value as the EMP is about to come online for Aldo again. Cap comes back the way of the Chengdu Hunters and eyes on Late Young nearly has that grab. That's really all they got going for them. Although, though, throws out the EMP and they're able to pop Late Young. That's a critical find. Manual hack onto Amung as well. He's eaten some heat right about now. The res does come through onto Late Young. They need to stay ahead in this one, the London Spitfire, if they want to not get caught by that grab. grab it comes out. The bob is huge as well. And with that, I think Chengdu might just be able to seal this one in. Bernard would have to do a hell of a lot of work. He managed it last time, but this time, no such luck by the looks of things. But I've got to say, they kept it competitive. They just didn't quite keep a lid on those extra members. If they killed a few more of Chengdu, I think they could have closed that out. You see that as well. It's 96 for Bernard, 98 for Glissa. The pulse grab combo was just there. They needed a few more seconds to be able to really commit. I think Yvelto has been the real issue for London to deal with right now. Constant reses, high value as well. That last res on the late young to get him back into action for the game-winning grab. That's what gets Chengdu hunters across the line. If that grab wasn't there, if late young had to respawn, come back from the spawn itself, Chengdu don't win that fight at all. So you gotta pressure this mercy right now. London Spitfire have to do something about Yveltal or the reses are just gonna be too impactful. That was pretty decent as well. And there was actually a moment there where it honestly looked like London were just going to kind of get washed out. But they they fought tooth and nail in a fight sort of in the mid part of that. And 
Made it very competitive in the end, and I uh, kind of think they're starting to hit their stride a little bit now, once they've found a slightly better team composition. Also, really feeling the difference with having Glister on his tracer. So, London Spitfire now need to focus their attention onto Late Young and Molly. The rest of the players are going to be very scattered. You can see that already Late Young and Molly are just grouping together. That has to be the center of the dive, and it's going to be like a mixed dive raw comp for London Spitfire as well. Opening bio, Nade Ooh. does catch J-Mac, and well, Lily's down yeah. as well. That was a bit of a brutal one. Highly dies in the rotation. J-Mac, first of all, biota grenade, then got slapped as well. Didn't have the en enough healing at his back. And uh, I don't disagree with what Spitfire did there. They tried to just take the fight on the ground, go for a big, quick, concerted dive, but just took a bit too much damage in that dive. And it's always going to happen when you have Jimmu on the fire, one of the best fires in the league, by the way, as well. And he's going to be doing a ton of damage. Keep your eyes on that particular ult charge on 46 for now. And Burner has to be the guy to stop him. He's playing the D.Va, he's got the defensive matrix. It's going to be a very important tool for shutting down Jim Moo. But again, it's the guys on the ground right now. If you're the London Spitfire, not a lot you can actually do against the people in the sky. Unless Aldo can get a hack onto either Jim Moo or Yveltal, you're not really going to be able to kill them. If you can get late Young on Molly, that would be how London Spitfire can win this. Ooh, there goes the move in from J-Mac. But again, he's already so low and he's effectively surrounded. Glister, though, able to pop leave around the side. And they managed to get just enough healing into the back of J-Mac to the point where now Amon is actually taking pause as he pushes to the point. Rez has to be committed, but that takes Yveltal out of the pocket of Jin Moo for some critical moves moments and that difference in damage is felt sorely as London outpaced Chengdu on the ground. It's super good timing here for London as well. If this fight goes for a little bit longer, suddenly the ults come online. Molly is nearly on that nano boost that probably saves one of the tanks. You got leave Jimmu and Among almost on their ults as well. That was very critical. If just a few seconds more and maybe Chengdu maintained their control over the point but London Spitfire now. A decent while better. EMP's nearly up, and that will be the important tool for the next fight. Yeah, you're also looking at maybe Glister finding one with the Pulse Bomb. Also want to see Sanguinite get that sound barrier available. It's just a bit of an insurance policy here as Glister's fishing for something. They've managed to maybe find some members. Molly caught out in a small, confined space, although getting picked as brutal, though. They needed that EMP. That being said, they find Jinmu. That forces the res out. They don't have the EMP, but they have got the sound barrier, and Chengdu have used a lot of what they've got when you consider Molly died and couldn't get a nano boost off if London can stay alive and start finishing off a few more members now pushing aggressively back out into Chengdu with that sound barrier they're caught in a grab they were nearly able to finish off late young but instead Chengdu with those members caught up in the grab are able to finish off the London Spitfire before they can get any more purchase on the hunters that has been a good amount of percentage of cruel though for Spitfire and this has been everything invested for Chengdu so come back in next time around with the EMP London is still looking good here they needed the EMP so badly as well this is what you got to do to keep Jim Mu down they finally got the kill on the Jimmu, which is going to be very difficult in this matchup. And he gets instantly raised back in. As far as Rezas goes here, there's almost nothing where you force the res out. Because every single res that comes through is so impactful and so important for the Chengdu Hunters. They've never really skipped a beat in terms of the Rezas so far. So it's kind of 7v6 no matter where you go. Although he has to be the one to shut the Rezas down. Oh no! Hey, Mung is able to find him. Just drills him down. Is even going to get away scot-free. That's brutal if for no other reason than he gets... Um, Among up towards that minefield and just slows down London. And then he finds Glister with the help of Leave. This is brutal. Two fights in a row now. And we're still waiting to see the EMP. It has to be the game where if the EMP doesn't connect well, I don't think London can really get this round anymore. We're heading towards final fight territory. 80% plus. This will be the final opportunity to try and get back in. Among is trying to take matters into his own hands. Instant minefield aggressively. Yeah. The thing is, London can just rat around it here without really losing out on too much. So walk into the rocket branch soon. That is one part of it at least, although it gets pressured out, so no EMP just yet, but London have still rotated in towards the point. Glister eating some heat, but they've got a pulse bomb out from him. Doesn't get anything done. They also have a coalescence. Oh, Bernard catches Leaves pulse bomb. That's a decent one for them. Jinmu still waiting on that rocket barrage. Hasn't committed it yet. That's the one. That's, That's the a brilliant enemy. pick finding a Veltal and although follows up on Late Young. And now they're holding on to that EMP, the Sword of Damocles over the Hunter heads. And that's Jinmu down as well, the very important member who had that rocket barrage. You can see the potential game plan there for Chengdu was use the mines on the main entrance of the choke, force London Spitfire to come through other side rooms and then get caught in the rocket barrage. But Jinmu never found that right opportunity. Yveltal finally dies. That might be his first death over the Ooh. course of both the rounds so far. EMP will catch two and Molly is confirmed. Tempo, tempo. They don't quite find late young. Yveltal's happy yes. to commit a res there, but this is 99% for the Hunters. They were able to back cap that. London need to get back and control it. So two for one. Favorite 
favoring the Hunters. That's with no res available anymore. If London could outpace kills, but no, they lose highly as well. It's just London up a tree without a ladder here. No healers at the back to these tanks. J-Mac, Bionated, slept. It all comes out. The Rocket Barrage directly on top of him to finish him off. That does secure control for the Chengdu Hunters. I've got to say, though, that was solidly competitive, and in both rounds, that was only a couple of fights away from being London's. I think you need to start looking at the situation where I don't know how much longer uh, Chengdu Hunters will be playing that same composition. We did see some fire gameplay today from the Houston Outlaws, but that kind of thing does get counted if you can play the Ashes and play the hit scan. Maybe McCree would have been a decent pick as well. But as far as the dive goes there, um, when you did eventually get Molly and Let Young down, they just kept getting raised back in there. So yeah. again, for me, Yavelta was a real problem. He only had one death, if I remember correctly. I didn't mm. see him die at all on, on Trine, and I saw him die that one time on Village that was very impactful. But other than that, there was so many raises, like five, six raises over the course of those two rounds. And every single time, it just feels like you're playing 6v7 at that stage in the game. Uh, and there's really no forcing of his raises either. Because yeah. to force a res is like, we don't want to res here. Every time he wants a res and every time he does get a res... It just undoes all the hard work from the London Spitfire. So maybe in a future map yep. where you know we can get rid of the pharmacy combo of Chengdu, then things will look a bit better. Yeah, and a little bit unfortunate as well that they uh, they weren't able to pick up kills in positions where maybe a Veltal is vulnerable going for that res as well. So look, you've got to commend the Chengdu Hunters for making that composition work, but I, I agree with you there. I don't know how much more runway they actually get off that, and well, Spitfire's a plane, so runway favours them. At any rate, we're going to take a couple of minutes break here before we get stuck on with the remainder of this series, so don't go anywhere. Thanks for sticking with us through that one. Currently 1-0 up in favor of the Chengdu Hunters. I'm currently holding in a sneeze, so I might just have to pass that one out if I stop talking very, very suddenly. That is why. Uh, but look, that was a very competitive one, I would say. I sort of touched it before the break. It felt like a couple of moments there. It was maybe only just one fight away from going the way of London. So like, this isn't like an absolute washout so far. And we also kind of talked about some compositional things that might not continue to hold water for Chengdu moving forward in the series. And I think, uh, you know, and, and rightly highlighted, we talked did talk about burner at the start of this and you've already seen what kind of impact you can have mm -hmm. on both of those rounds there on shrine he almost single-handedly brought it back three kills by himself and to be able to then put london back in a position where they can at least reach 99 percent and then you did see on that second round of village as well where he catches the pulse bomb coming through um and overall just has a really solid game so good to see burner back in the lineup good to see him performing quite well and in a flex tank meta where you do need very good flex tanks you know we're moving him to kind of zaya roadhog kind of territory here which does 
say that, hey, heading into future maps, maybe you do see Kliston being brought in to play specifically with Burnout. Maybe you see a DPS player go over there as well. So a lot of questions still to be raised and mm -hmm. asked about how we're going to address the further maps, but it has been pretty competitive so far. I think we've identified well what Chengdu are doing in terms of their game plan, and it's fairly basic. It's fairly simple. It's what yeah. they've always been doing. It's Jinmu Far and Aimang Wrecking Ball. Those are the two things you have to get rid of and really deal with, and well supported by Yveltos Mercy. So uh, if you can get past those pillars, then, Chung then London Spitfire have a good road to victory. Yeah, and it very much feels like, uh, for the purposes of control specifically, uh, like the reason we didn't see something like an Ash to just directly decide to address the pharmacy was because they wanted to play the dive more than they wanted to like actively counter Jinmu. And I've got to say, like when you consider that they like it was close, I don't think that was the wrong call at all. Yeah, definitely playing towards the game plan. I mean, this is what they prepared. I think the coach to learn to spit fire. If anything, you look at their history, they are well and proven members of the team. I definitely trust they'll know what they're doing here. There is Cliston and Berna. All right. Fable's going to come in okay. as well instead of all those. Fuse, Fuse is going to be coming okay. in for Sanguina. It's a big shift. That, uh, no one changed on the Chengdu side of things. No. Chengdu are going to be sticking to their guns here. They have a very flexible line. Look, they can continue to play the pharmacy if they want to. It does seem like Jim is maybe considering that at least for point A. Uh, but they can also do stuff like the Leave Genji, Leave Tracer. Leave is probably the one of the most flexible players in maybe the entire league. I mean, it's like him, Prophet, and a few other guys that can just really play it all, can't they? So for the Chengdu Hunters, I think we've already identified what the game plan is. It's Aemon back on the wrecking board. Jimmu looks like he wants to be on Farah and London Spitfire across both Babel and Glister. Well, they got the head scans, they got the snipers ready. And for this particular map, because Kliston and Burner are in together, it is Roadhogs and Zarya. All right, I dig it. I'll, I'll buy that one for a dollar. I'm also quite looking forward to whatever it is League decides to commit to. I imagine this will just be a it's pop shot really Widowmaker. Winner. I mean, everything League plays is fairly Exactly. Good. <laughs> it's almost no bad pick from so far, but uh, double sniper. I do like to see that. Babel and Glister together. A lot of pick Hanzo potential. Hanzo and Widowmaker. And not a lot of shielding. I mean, despite Aemung still being on a main tank, doesn't provide any shield. Oh, dear. Instantly, the Hawk dies in. That oh. be the spider gone. Jinmu able to go hunt a killer right there on top of Glister, and nobody really stopping him as well. Unfortunately, now the shot's in onto Babel. Leave is able to finish him off, and this is a little bit of a tough start for the Spitfire. I don't know that Fuse can safely go for a res on either of those DPSs, which gives Chengdu Hunters free reign over the point. They've already capped it out. A lot of time on the clock here. I tell you what, this is where the dam starts Listed. to break as well because once Glister is down, no one keeps leaving check because no one keeps leaving check. Jimmu can do whatever he wants to. This time around, Glister does get that kill, but once more, Yvelta on the res, super impactful. Now Glister under a bit of pressure from Amon. He's so able to pull himself to safety, has Cleston on top of him. Cleston also staying alive under a fair bit of heat there, has allowed London to maintain this defensive position rather than give it up off the cuff. So they can at least take a fight here now, try and slow the Hunters down. Well, this is where London Spitfire are definitely going to be able to contest a little bit better. And this very important Widowmaker Jewel can decide the game as well. No shields to hide behind. Amon Slip here. Yeah, that's actually a very good opportunity. London Spitfire, they can maybe land a bottom A. That is how they can kill them. Now you've got a question if you're a Veltile, do you stay in the pocket of Jinmu while he fishes maybe for a rocket barrage angle or do you try and go in for a res on Aemung and... I don't think he's got it. Yeah, he decides to just stick with Jinmu and I think that's not at all a bad call, but London able to slow down Chengdu just a touch. Still need to take that fight though, Cleston. Barely misses out on the take a breather there. Wasn't quite available. He'll need to use, he'll need to use it now for sure. As Jimmu has a rocket barrage ready. In fact, Chengdu hunters have a lot of ultimates coming online in the next couple of seconds. So London Spit fighting. Oh, oh dear life as Glister falls. That's so brutal. And they've been waiting for that critical pick to come out London while they just seeded more and more ground. Chengdu just kind of keeping them surrounded on all sides. The tanks, you saw Cleston unable to go for hooks against priority targets. You saw Glister never being allowed to have the firing oh, lines right. on top of Jinmu or Evel Tal. And it just continues. They're getting absolutely hammered right now. Right we now. haven't really had much of a real fight, though. Consider what happened on B. London kind of just slowly backed out. Chengdu slowly walked in there. They haven't had to expend ultimates. Chengdu just get to walk in. They've used a one rocket barrage. They got five of the ultimates available. London Spitfire will be matching that soon. They need to find these picks. This burnout slowly waits to get his grab online. 
Late Young is going to go ahead and commit his first, and they've got Claston just in the line of fire there. Nothing he can do about that one. A Monk pressuring forward. Bernard's gone for his own grab. They need to get a lot done. Babel, there we go. That's an old school combo. The grab into the dragon strike, and it works. A mighty charm. Fuse even getting the res off means London at full fighting force have finally given Chengdu pause, but honestly, that cart couldn't have gone any further. You finally reset them as well. Jimmu knows better than to play far on C, and that's important because you don't want Jimmu to continue fire shenanigans. You want to knock one of those pillars down very quickly. Yavaltel probably just used a Valkyrie and swap over to maybe a Lucio or something of that degree. As uh, we'll see how well the Jimmu Genji starts to work, and this is where I think London Spitfire's composition starts to really get into groove. As long as they can punish Among Dive again. Trying to get aggressive on top of Babel. He's happy to just pop back down to the low ground, but London do it to take that fight around the card eventually. And if Glister and Babel aren't getting the picks to back that up, then it's kind of hard for Cleston and Bernard to just hold that ground, especially when you see how much interference Among puts onto them. Well, London have a decent amount of tools to work with here, especially the Nana Boost, I think, could be one of the bigger ones. Ooh, there's the picks. Through. Instant kills, headshot from Glister. Beautiful to see. And that's what they need to be doing. They need to be getting that damage in, get those Cap. picks off, and... Oh, are you okay. joking? Cap? <laughs> Cap. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's, uh, Yvelto can't believe it's luck. He's just smiling for days right now. And that I, was I, the I, most Chengdu Hunters think, thing. I don't think anyone can believe what just happened there. I kind of just saw it while Among solo capping right now. And is anyone going to contest that one? The answer ends up being no. And that's a bit of a shocker because, to be fair, I, I think London Spitfire's composition wins on C. Yeah. In particular position. Jim Mu's Genji is okay. It's not really god tier. It's not really what is going to be the game winner. It's certainly not on the same level as as far. I think Chengdu's composition starts to really weaken as we get deeper into that C point defense and London Spitfire's composition only improves from there. Really, I think London Spitfire could have um, realistically have a completed hold on. See, that sh this should not be a like, map yep. that goes over time, the time back rather, but that is where we're going to have to be, be going now for London Spitfire. Assuming we'll get all three points here. 4 0 9. It's also honestly a very quick time. I'll throw them a bone. I, I think they actually expected Among to reset. You actually see the positions they were taking there. Uh, Cleston and Bernard were both actually trying to run down the rest of the Hunters. Did... Uh, Among was still on the back line. I'm trying I just to, don't think anyone had really accounted for him, unfortunately. You have to. Like, this is the problem. You don't account for... The, it's not even Sombra walking on your back line doing that. It's a it's a wrecking ball. And I my biggest question is, did Cleston have hook on Cauldron? I didn't check that. If he he actually did land it. He, 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 he used it and landed it. He would have been out of range, but he actually landed it, but it was after the cap had come through. Unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, if you hooked him off, I think that was maybe one of the only ways to get him off. Unfortunately, there's not enough mobility on London's... At that time, composition, maybe Glister just, you know, hook shots in, but I don't know if he had that available either. In any case, London's going to need a very quick time now to contest 4 0 and 9. Chung Du are playing a different composition. They're doing the same. Roadhog, Zarya, Aimung on the Hog. It's not something we see very often, so we'll be looking forward to see how he does on that as London play. Basically, the same thing with Bernard now and Sigma instead. Yeah, it's the only shift, and this is the second time we've actually seen Bernard lean towards that Sigma. It didn't quite work out for them the first time. He was running it with a Reinhardt trying to sort of. Um, Sort of bunkered down in a way on the well, point. I can tell you the combo <laughs> now. Thing. The combo is going to be hook into accretion, and that will confirm any kill in the game. Sometimes you get the hook, you might not get the kill, especially if it's on another tank. But if you get hook, hooked into an accretion where you're instantly stunned on the fall, that is good. No one survives it. Even if you're Among with full HP, you will die in Ooh. that situation. Unfortunately, Claston going down there, but they have traded that one out with Among. So one for one, and in theory, that favors the Spitfire. They have the close respawn. Losing Babel maybe hampers that just a touch with those reses coming through now onto both of the hogs. And London's still just trying to scrap their way forward, having quite made enough headway in terms of picking up kills. Uh, well, you got to beat the first res, and if Among didn't get res, well, that would have been a very different situation. London maybe have a Molly. decent opportunity, but this just gets traded again. So it's a one for one, which might still work out well. I don't think the res is quite available yet, but no one can contest leave either, which is a bit of an issue. And Glister comes straight out of the base oh, wow. pretty quickly. That's maybe the thing that's going to help them out the most here, but Jinmu about to have an EMP as soon as London start moving into something, and it's going to cut them off for the legs. This is going to be a very impactful, acrobatic flux. 
Oh Sometimes goodness. Time. Oh big goodness. EMP, okay, the nano boost goes on to burn now. They're prioritizing him, but on the converse of that Klesson, oh, he's just barely able to get to take a breather off, and now the Gravitic Flux comes out. Late Young goes up, Late Young goes down, and Veltile knows he can't go for that res. It's in the middle of where the Spitfire currently sat, and Among surrounded on all sides in the hotel. So with that, London have finally established themselves on the point. Brilliant hook to finish off a of Veltile, and that is going to crack the fortress as London poised to cat point A. And oh, there it is, Burn has just got to take the game into his own hands, whether that be on Sigma, Diva, Zarya, or otherwise. Chengdu now, back to their old tricks. Among back on the Wrecking Ball, and it is his best pick. Why wouldn't you play it if it's your best at this stage in the game? Let's see how much extra momentum the London Spitfire can get again. 409 is a target here, although just camping and getting to the time bank is the first priority. Making sure you have a good time will be the second. Oh, Leave down early. It might just get Rizzo. We'll see if Leave is going to come back, and he will. It definitely will, but if London can find another pick now, like finding Leave again. Hello? Now going to throw out the Dragon Strike. Just the force Chengdu Hunters into an impossible situation. It finds Jin Moon. You saw Cleston putting the pressure on Late Young. He did not have an angle to retreat to. Among is at this point just trying to stall, trying to rob London of getting too much free cart push, but they are still going to get a significant chunk. This is exactly what they need. And this is what you can do with Double Sniper versus just the one, by the way. Leave can only do so much. There's no main tank blocking damage. There's no shields available to hide behind. So both Glista and Babel can just continually punish him and bully him if possible. Jin Moon now on the Genji assist Among on the dive. We'll put a little bit of extra pressure on Late Young in terms of choosing who he puts the bubble on, but maybe oh. Among will just play a little bit safer in general. Uh, decides not to. The whole hog got committed there by Clest and they uh, maybe got the dollar bills in their eyes. What it does do is it, again, gives a bit more space to the cart, allows them to get a little bit more free push, so there's maybe something out of that, but not the ideal use of the whole hog. Yeah, well, Among is trying to leave anyway, so speaking of extra push, it's just helping oh, boy. Him push the way this time. Push back into spawn, that will be unresable for sure. Yeah, high value sleep coming through there. It is traded with Babel, but he is resable compared to Among, so this is still priority for the London Spitfire as they continue to push forward. Jinmu really feeling the pressure. Popping a Veltal is big. Now, Molly still has a transcendence, but first, Chengdu have to give up some ground. Maybe wait for a Veltal before they push back in. No, Molly has to commit to this. Leave got too low, and he has to rush on the side, but Babel himself on that same flank is maybe there a tad too long. They do finally find Leave, but London left themselves a bit too exposed to the guns of the Hunters, and they are going to get picked apart just as they are on the cusp of capping. Shimbu survives in 25 HP as well. So Chengdu Hunter still holding on to this B cap. And this is going to be an important one because Chengdu got past B fairly cleanly. Now, look, Cloud9 aside on what happened on C, on B and A, Chengdu really played those points quite well. So for London, now to have a bit of a slowdown. A lot of catch-up will be required, but there is going to be a Gravitic Flux available, and Bernard did use that to win the previous fight on the A, so maybe a decent amount of purchase can be found this time around as well. Definitely looking forward to seeing Glister on this tracer. He tends to make his presence felt pretty handily, pretty quickly, but this is going to be a tough Hunters to get through, unfortunately. It's an accretion, but they don't really have anything they can do to follow it up. Jinmu, he gets one, then gets cut down himself. Babel is actually potentially resible here by Fuse. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for that. Yeah, finds the free time. So this is actually a man advantage to the London Spitfire as they're about to come up on a Nano Boost, on a Valkyrie. They've got the whole hog. They could maybe make something happen here. Oh. Amon goes in deep. It's a big knockup, and it does force the Spitfire to give a bit of space, but nobody's dead yet, and they're pushing back forward. They've got rid of the Bob. This could be it. Grab is available for Late Young here. Burner might be able to eat this one if he does have an Grask available. Unfortunately not. Quite there. Highly though, he was able to save the team at least for now. Whole heart committed by Cleston will be able to push people away. So all in all, that is going to be survival. Cleston? The gravity, Ooh. Gravity on surge. That's a trade, but Cleston's died in a really tough spot to maybe get that res in on top of, unfortunately. No fuse, still able to find it. Brilliant stick from Glister. And finally, as the wet noodle fight comes to its conclusion, as everyone has committed all their ult it's Glister comes up on a pulse bomb, pops one. Man advantage here to the Spitfire. Chengdu are doing the right thing. They're fighting around the card itself to stop London Spitfire from getting too much space while Chengdu wait for respawners. We're still going to essentially have a 6v6, but Chengdu are not in the ideal position. You see that in Late Young getting picked off. You see that in Leave stuck under the blazing guns of Glister around the side. Now Amo as he tries to reinforce. So London keeping the card on lockdown. They are going to cap B for their troubles here. They're going to get this one in over. Shy of overtime, it's going to be about five seconds remaining at 1.30 now on the clock to confirm. See, it only comes nice to help things on a little bit further as Chengdu 
Just waiting for a couple of respawns here, working on their next ring of ultimates, leave nearly onto that vibe, and Late Young would love to get another grab, but while that sort of happens, London can get a lot of pressure done. They have highly on the nano boost, and that can be a very big tool on its own. Still need to get the cap across, that's the critical thing, but if they can keep finding clicks... Oh, oh yeah, Amon could... I don't know, did you miss the tether or something? Trying to get something a bit too spicy with the ball, goes down. This is more room to the London Spitfire. And this is it, we're actually getting very close to the cap now. Just a little bit more distance. Leave in trouble. Bionated. Jimbo is nearly on the EMP and the wild bionated low. Gets a kill, that's a big kill actually. Uh, Leave is able to take that space on the high ground barely as it is, but it means Fuse can't get that res. And that was with Hylia with a nano boost that he ended up not committing into Babel. Maybe just didn't quite have the angle on it, unfortunately. But one man down for the Spitfire. They do find Leave though, and honestly, Babel's not too far off coming back into the fight. You can already see him off to the side. Leave gets res, but Amon goes back down. So London, they're in for a penny, in for a pound at this point. EMP to come across, finds two, and it's a critical two. Grav as well. No nano boost to keep members alive, but late young low. And again, a one for one trade here. These trades in theory favor the hunters, but the res is there for Cleston. So they keep the pressure on and they've got the ultimates coming up on rotation. Molly in a lot of trouble here. Glister has him in his sights, needs to get that finish off. Meanwhile, the Gravitic Floods to help connect that one. They finally pop both the supports. Cleston does go down for his trouble, but look at the damage coming out from the Spitfire. They got the members on the card. They just need to pop the last the few tanks. They've got rid of the Barbies. Not on the map, like you said. Now, late young down. Among slept and they've got it over the line. They are still alive. Well, they'll be able to draw this one at best now that the Spitfire is still in this particular map. That's important, but do Hunters do force in the overtime. I think this map was really settled on B. C was a good campaign coming through for London Spitfire. That was, again, probably their highest performing part of that map. I would say the same thing about the defense despite the C9. B, though, if there was a little bit more time to play with the London Spitfire, if there wasn't such the same slowdown, could have had a, a decent time on C, then going into the time bank where it was potentially still a winnable situation. But now 409, well, one tick, Chengdu, a good position to get a 2-0, but London Spitfire, if they can hold on to this one, the series should very much still be in their hands. I mean, gosh, it's doable, but it's brutal. It's also Jim Moo back on the fire, and this is the right. other issue as well. Part of the reason why C is very good is you can start forcing Chengdu off of these very, I guess, uh, signature picks for their particular team. But once you're on to A and you have to deal with the pharmacy again, you have to deal with the Among Ball, that's where things get very interesting and difficult. Glad to see Babel start on the Ash. You definitely mm. need some hit scan pressure. You need to make sure that you can punish your Valtel and Jimmu. That's part of the win condition here. Leave on the Widowmaker is actually very smart because you want to counter the sniper on the other team to then enable Jimmu. So overall, Chengdu, while they have kind of a weird comp, it's not quite a standard comp. It works out super well for the team. Let's see if London can do the same. I think Cleston as well. If you can get someone on the sky, if you can mm. manage to get one of those hooks, that would be very, very good. Definitely liking Glister starting on this Tracer. I feel like we just, we've just we seen more impact out of him on the Tracer for what it's worth. I also think uh, not having the double snipers here does just leave London a little bit more rounded. We saw last time Jinmu was able to pretty handily deconstruct both the Widowmaker and the Hanzo. So, so to see how well Spitfire fares. It's a long time to hold out for. Can't give any ground. And this is also where Glister is just trying to play a little bit of distraction on the back line as well. Make Molly turn him around. That's very important. Making sure that he can't just continually heal among back to full HP, and he Clister's is always on low HP. Cleston's been bionated as well. Chengdu also low HP for what it's worth, so they can't just go in deep yet. And you're seeing that, especially with Amung. They rely on him a lot for their forward pressure. Oh, Leaf gets an amazing catch onto Hylia, and they know that they've got an opportunity here while Fuse looks for a res, and unfortunately, they just don't keep the members on the point. They were trying to back up, get the res, and push back on, but a bit of deja vu, dare I say it. Uh, but at the end of the day, look, I think at this point, really, what you've got to revisit is what actually happened on C the first time around for London. It's an oopsie, but it's a very costly oopsie. But you sort of reflect on that going, okay, that was where the defense was really starting to get rolling. Let's assume that, that the cap doesn't go through in the way it did. Like, how long do they actually hold out for? Do they hold out for that four minutes? Because it's it feels really plausible. Yeah. And it's a shame that well, we didn't get to explore that world because their attack was solid enough to get it over the line. Their defense might have been solid enough to stop the hunters. Like, 
this feels like the weirdest two and zero because it feels like it could just as easily be a two and zero over to the side of the Spitfire. Well, I mean, uh, in a really kind of a humorous turn, there's no better team to see nine than London Spitfire. <laughs> uh, that's really what it's about at the end of the day. But at the same time, uh, you have to revisit Kings Row C mm -hmm. on that particular defense. I think we could have gone down to two minutes, one minute. If, if not, that would have been, uh, in my honest opinion, I think they had the better comp in that particular yeah. matchup and they should have been able to hold on C and we shouldn't have even been to time bank. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's just how it works. Still opportunity, though. We're not done in the series. Oh, yeah. 2-0 is not going to be a win just yet. And you know what? We said we wanted a fun game. We said we wanted an interesting game. And, I mean, hey, look, we're, we're getting, you know, we're getting the wrecking ball out of the Hunters. We're getting Glister popping off in this racer. And we got a C9. There's nothing more comedic than that. At any rate, let's go ahead and see how the guys are doing on the ground in London. Ian, what's it like? Welcome back to London. Give it up, Spitfire fans. Can you believe this? Right? This is what's so cool about these watch parties here in London. We are 2 0 down at the minute, and if you'd have been here, you'd have never believed that it. it has been popping off because we've got some confidence coming out of this going into map three. We love a reverse sweep. London Spitfire love to get the odd sweep and brush out. Um, let's bring Tony up really quick. Welcome, Tony. <laughs> you were one of the fans, Tony, hit me with the elbow. There you, go. Uh, you were one of the fans making a lot of noise there. It's not all doom and gloom. Chengdu go into map three looking to take it all, but Spitfire, there are some positives to take from the two maps there, especially map two. Absolutely. I, mean, I think that the, the fact that we're actually taking it all the way here, it's not just a complete shutout, is a really good sign. Mm. The fact that we're changing our composition up, we're changing the players up, we're putting forward an effort, seems like a good thing, you know? I think so, yeah. And I mean, when you say that players are stepping up, who in particular really impressed you? over the last 20 minutes or so there? These, these last few maps, obviously, Burner's been doing a lot of work. I mean, he's, he's standing right? like Atlas with the rest of the team on yeah, his back. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Hailey coming in, doing some amazing healing. Fuse coming in and really stepping up, getting some great reses in. Every time that the Chengdu Hunters on that first map were getting those reses, it would just negate all the, the, the hits that we were doing. So yeah. finally having Fuse coming in, resing Kles and his hog, that's super important for us to be able to take any of these points. It's just keeping the team alive, keeping that uptime. When it comes to this season, there's a bit of a gulf in quality between Chengdu and um, Spitfire. However, that gulf isn't as evident here this morning. Do you feel like we've stepped up a bit? It's, it's part that. The meta is really, really volatile right now. And I think that Spitfire is trying to balance between playing towards what Chengdu does, which is playing completely off meta. So they're trying to do really wacky compositions and mm -hmm. see if that works, throwing spaghetti at the wall. Or like they were saying, the wet noodle team fight. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But the other thing is that they're also trying to stick with what they're consistent with, and they're trying to, to bring that in, and they're trying to balance you know, the, the players that they know and the, the heroes that they know really well mm -hmm. versus trying to make it really diverse and interesting to go against the stuff that the Chengdu's throwing. So going into map three, do we need to start throwing some spaghetti at the wall? Is that what we need to do is play the objective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. This is what I'm saying. It's not just the Brits who are terribly honest. It's, um, it's not a, a problem if we can win the team fights, but it doesn't matter if we're not on the payload, mm. ever. <laughs> yeah. So you're not filling me with confidence here, but I feel like you do feel like Spitfire do have it in the tank going into map three. The, the team is there, the, the strategy is there, but it's all about playing the actual, you know, what's, what's, our, what's our goal? Mm -hmm. you know, so if, if their focus is killing their team, they're not going to be thinking about the stuff they need to. You know, what's the, the primary focus? They've just got to keep, you know, keep their eye on the ball. Reverse sweep. We were all saying 3-2, so this is that opportunity for those three points. I think he's right, isn't yeah. it? We all, we all agree. Round of applause for Tony. Thank you very much, Tony. I think we should bring a new uh, member of the London Spitfire fan club here up onto the stage. Charlotte, would you like to come and join us? <laughs> Hello, Charlotte. Shall we all look? So I'm just going to carry on doing that forever. I think it's just cooler. It's great. Um, Charlotte, how do you feel? after maps one and two. Do you agree with what Tony had to say? I definitely agree. I think it could be worse. It could be worse. Could, be could you just take a step just slightly to your left? Yeah, there you go. Left. It could be worse. It, it could, could be, be much worse, yeah. yeah. I think considering, one, we didn't get fully held on King's Row and we took it high 90s in Nepal, I definitely think we have a chance. Because mm -hmm. even if we don't win, which I think we will, we definitely do have possibilities of taking them. Yeah. So did you... Did they exceed your expectations so far? This I definitely morning? think compared to how the last couple of maps and games have gone, they mm -hmm. definitely have exceeded my expectations. They're pulling it together and I really do like it. 
Yeah, I mean, Bernard, do you think that he's really been carrying the team so far as well? Do you agree yeah. with Tony here? Is it, is, or is Sean yeah. is going to be aching going into map three? Yeah, he's going to have scoliosis after this, all that carry on his back. <laughs> and where do you think this is going to go? Do you believe that we've got what it takes? I definitely be believe we've got what it takes. Yeah, well, we've got you here, Charlotte. I am mm -hmm. fascinated to know how you got into this. Um, how did you become a massive London Spitfire fan? To well, give up your Friday morning, I say give it up, to be here enjoying yeah. yourself in um, So I started playing Overwatch, funnily enough, on Switch of all platforms back in 2019 when it first came out. Yep. And I was like, ooh, but you have something to do with London. I was like, I kind of like this. So I found a couple of Discord to join them, watch some more matches, and I was like, yeah, I like this. Yeah, they're a good team, aren't they? I say, better than my American pick team. Oh yeah, who was that? Boston. Oh yeah, good. We don't care about Boston. <laughs> Boo! Boo Boston. <laughs> give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Charlotte. Thank you, Charlotte. Penny, before we go back, can you just join us one more time, Penny? Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> welcome, welcome back, Penny. Now, the fascinating thing about Penny is, do you want to just pop out your wallpaper one more time? Now, this is pretty cool. He's got his favourite player. Just, just show this to the camera one more time. Just, yeah, hello. Oh, Look at this. Oh, it's gone. Is it? This is DM. No, it's my Spotify. <laughs> we don't want to get you in trouble. Right, there we go. So we've got Glister as his wallpaper. And we said coming into this that if we're going to really go all the way and win, Everybody part of this, uh, this fan team right here, right now, have to set their wallpapers to Spitfire wallpapers. Did we do it? Yeah. Yes. Get your phones up in the air, let our cameraman Woo. see them, because this is going to give us the energy we need. Look at this. That is proper fandom right there. Give it up for yourselves. Penny. Hello. This doesn't end on map three. No, hopefully not. Do you believe it? I mean, I'm starting to, I'm like, like Tony and everyone else are saying, they've stepped up since the last few games, mm. they're playing like, phenomenally, if they stood on point, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> everything's going pretty well, I think. I was sitting here watching, not just the, uh, the game unfold with our wonderful casters talking over the top, but I was watching you guys react to some of the big moments, and yeah. you were one of the loudest. What was some of this? <laughs> <laughs> we, we love it. Um, what were some of your standout moments there that made you pop the most? I think... First map, Bernard getting like, was it a 3k? Just like on his own, that mm. was pretty cool to see. And then uh, this map, whenever we took a point, it was just how we kept staggering or like suddenly just made so much progress. Yeah. And then somehow reses were like the most hyped thing, which I don't remember that ever being a thing in this game, but yeah. here we are. Here we are, that's what you get in playoff territory. So we don't want to go home. No. We want to keep doing events like this, um, especially going forward from today. 3-2? 3-2. 3-2. Right, give it up for Penny one more time. <laughs> two. Ooh, well, we've got a couple more minutes to, to do a bit more conversation. So let's bring up Isabella. Hello. <laughs> now, Isabella, you said something that blew my mind just a little bit earlier on. You, for some reason, want me to sign your limited yeah, edition Yeah, I'd, I'd really like you to. And my goal is... is to hopefully, when it's possible, to meet the players and get them to sign this amazing limited edition hat as well. Mm. So you would be the first. I do not deserve to be on that cap. You do in my eyes. But I, but in I, my I, eyes, you do. <laughs> now, you do realize, now yeah. these, are, these are very limited edition. Like, and when I say limited edition, I mean like super limited. It's like it's, it's got an event on there that didn't even happen. So <laughs> you're very lucky to have this. I am. And to get even though like I didn't this, deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> and to get items like this, you need to come to watch parties like this, and that all comes down to being part of Hang and I. Yes. Um, Isabella, tell us a little bit about it before we get back into the action. So Hangar 9 was created by Oak, who unfortunately isn't here today, mm -hmm. but he is obviously very missed. And um, we just wanted to bring a place where people could enjoy what we enjoy together in a safe environment, as inclusive as possible, and just to get these things going because enjoying the game with other people is magical. Having someone support the same thing you do is, is great. So we just wanted to create this safe place and now yeah. we're doing these great streams. So no, we're really happy. And Platform Bar here in Charlotte. Fantastic a place. Fantastic venue fantastic. to be doing that. Uh, we love it here. But like you said, there's no substitute to being together. No. And some of the relationships that you've seen form here, uh, it's amazing. You guys yeah. are all great friends. Did, did a lot of you all meet as yeah, part of this? Yeah, through, through Hangar 9. So I've got to create friendships with these lovely people. Mm. And it's, it's, you know, my friends outside of this don't understand gaming. Yeah. 
They just, <laughs> their eyes. Mine neither. Their eyes glaze over when I'm talking about it. So yeah. it's great to be able just to talk in depth with people and just to have that passion there. For sure. For this really specific thing that we enjoy. I'll sign that for you later, all right? Thank you. Thank Isabella, you. Isabella, thank you. We'll find out more about hanging out and how people can get involved a little bit later on. But okay. right now, let's cross over back to New Zealand. Avril and Pixie, it is time for a very sweep action. Let's have it. Absolutely, it is time for the reverse sweep. And I've got to say, uh, talking about this game in depth with other people is exactly what got me to this point. So, you know, I can see the merit in that. Uh, but yeah, reverse sweep. I don't know. I think I believe. Uh, it's certainly, there's like enough uh, evidence here for me to invest my faith in. I don't know if it's actually going to happen. It is a tough spot to be 0-2 down. You don't have that same margin for error. You certainly can't step off the cart any more times than you already have. But look, I think there is still just enough in this team. And... Uh, as some people rightly pointed out, like, this is already a better looking London, actually, than what we've seen for a wee while. And that alone kind of gives me the hope here. Yeah, hang tight in there, hang an island for London's bit five fans. Uh, there's still plenty of opportunity to get the it. wins got in it. there. And also, look, if you're enjoying the stream, once more, big shout out to Overwatch League. Go check out the link in the chat. Subscribe to Overwatch League. Subscribe to London Spitfire mm -hmm. for more of uh, this kind of this kind of show to come through. So, you know, we have an opportunity now to see if London Spitfire can maybe make the turnaround happen. Get on to map three start to get those wins in there we do start to feel like yeah there is the opportunity there is the potential where there uh especially well on both the previous maps there are plenty of opportunities to actually get the the wins in on all the all the rounds on the poll on king's row overall um and at the same time i think you you really can't do any worse than a couple of C9s yeah. that we've already seen. So you're getting defeated. <laughs> well, that's now. not tempt fate. Oh. Well, this thing is like, I think you, now that you've sort of yeah. seen that, it's really it's really about, okay, if we are going to be staying on the payload, if we are going to be contesting objectives properly, then realistically you can get into a position where King's Row could have been yours. King's Row could have been the one map and mm -hmm. you just didn't have that four minute time back to deal with because realistically I think it could have been either just completely one map on that last point alone or it could have been uh, a time back where neither team has any time to work with in, in which case it would have been winnable for either team but coming yeah. into map number three and onwards yeah if we just eliminate the the c9s completely i think uh london spitfire have a really good shot yeah like without that it looks like a far more normal very competitive match like it's it, it's one of those things that's quite easy to write off because it's also quite an easy thing to just not have happen again all things considered so like i, I think we can still quite fairly expect pretty good things out of this out of this season i gotta say uh, out of the series rather and uh, I mean hopefully season as well because with any luck we'll be uh, we'll be seeing London maybe go a little bit of a distance don't want to call things too early but you know fingers crossed and hopefully we'll also be able to do more of these things as well it's been uh, it's been really cool to be able to put these things on for what is a really dedicated group of fans obviously the people showing up in person and for those of you who are fans who maybe aren't in London or you know uh, can't quite make it out to you know at 9 a.m. on a Friday if maybe you actually have to be in an office chair or something or I suppose working from home at your uh, home office chair you know you've got this on to the side uh you know again thanks for thanks for tuning in thanks for the dedication it's really cool to have uh, have people like this supporting this team and i've got to say through thick and thin these are definitely not the fair weather fans that are sticking around at this point point. and don't forget by the way that at the end of the day even if london spitfire do lose this one you're still going through the playoffs you still have plenty of opportunities to fix things in time and to make those improvements as necessary to potentially make a really decent playoffs run but in this particular game not over at all for sky industries map number three coming on through just looking at the lineups in terms of substitutions nobody for either team it's going to be uh, the Elsa same as we saw for okay yeah. yeah oh yeah okay Elsa and Kyo that for Chengdu Hunters no substitutes for London's yep. Spitfire though Chengdu Hunters are going to go for the double flex tank no aim among this time at least that means no wrecking boy you have to deal with but what you are going to be dealing with is proper Roadhog's Aria or Roadhog Diva yeah. gameplay which is why both teams are running double flex tank. Yeah, not at all surprised to see Elsa here, given that we're on Volskaya, and obviously that means Cleston stays in. Um, Fuse over Sanguinar for that mercy play. And again, I'm... Uh, as much as the hogs are a factor here, it's sort of the... Uh, the centerpiece of the meta on these sorts of maps. At the same time, actually, it's... Uh, it's again, it's Glister and uh, to an extent Babel as well, that I really have my eye on here to be the big high impact players for London on this defense. Well, it's gonna be a lot of Glister versus Leave, and I think Leave has had actually a pretty good performance. He's 
I mean, again, it's, it's almost hard to say what Leave is well known for because it might as well be all the DPS heroes. So let's see if this is going to be a matchup that really lives up to the hype. Glisten needs to be able to outperform Leave here. Both teams are running Mercy, so the damage boosts are going to be in full effect. Also, the Resurrection is going to be in full effect. So whoever gets that kill and forces out an early res on towards the opposing Widowmaker, I mean, that is going to be one res out of the way. Else is also not actually playing the Hog after all that. He's on a Winston. And uh, on the other side of that, we're also seeing Bernard over on the Sigma. He's actually had a fairly impactful Sigma, but he's also had a pretty impactful uh, Zarya, and when you consider late young Zarya has been pretty impactful, um, I don't disagree with this necessarily, but it's really got to pull the mileage, and that's, a, speaking of pull the mileage, a decent hook to start things off for Claston. That's the first bubble gone for late young, so there's a bit of a 10 second window here for the London Spitfire to kind of work with. There is no same kind of defensive bubble coming through from London Spitfire, but what there will Ooh, be is glister. a better opportunity to confirm the kills. Didn't see the Bernard accretion hook combo that time around, but maybe in future that will be the case. Oh, there we go. That was critical. I was actually about to remark that Leave had set himself up on a pretty good angle, but hadn't quite accounted for Glister, who had solid tabs on him. Veltal Finding your Veltal, that's the real critical one. That is going to force Chengdu back, and they were otherwise trying to muscle and pressure out the point. Late catch there on Elsa as well with that orb of Discord, plus the headshot from Cleston. Glister does take a hit, but Fuse is going to be able to res that one, I imagine. And on the whole, this has been a solid defense so far. Well, Elsa playing this Winston will finally start to find a bit of value now that Kyo does have a nano boost available. But otherwise, I think you're just playing into Glisten's hands a little bit too tightly here. There is going to be one res back in, but one of your other snipers gone. At least Babel's on a Hansa that can come back a little bit quicker. Fuse will probably have to power up the Valkyrie here to try and stay alive for London Spitfire. All right. But another kill into Elsa would just make things a little bit more workable. I was about to say that Glister's going to have to work double shift here, and he immediately finds Elsa. There Elsa gets res. He immediately finds Jinmu as Glister coming alive. Losing highly is a tough break. Cleston slept as well down on the side. Means they lose a bit of that flank damage. They've found a Veltal. That's solid, but lost Bernar and London. They're kind of fighting with the dregs right now. Oh, losing Fuse. Glister's still pulling his weight. And they've got Babel back in. They've got Cleston back awake. He's going to pop Elsa. They need to get a lot of lot work done. Cleston takes a sleep, takes a Bionade, takes a death, unfortunately, in London. I don't quite think there's enough left here to hold on. But honestly, they've burned a chunk of time off the clock and that's going to put Chengdu just a little bit more against the wall as they push on to B. Yeah, losing both your, well, running your tanks here, losing highly as well, making that making that Fuse has to do a lot more healing work just to keep Cleston alive, who then gets bionated. Cleston can only do so much there. Glister got something like four kills in that middle of that fight to try and save London Spitfire, pulling a bit of a burn eye himself. Oh. But Unfortunately, not enough for London to hold on. Not a decent shot now over towards B. This is where I think their composition is going to be able to do very well. Let's see what Chengdu Hunters can do. I think Elsa, after this Primal Rage, might need to think about swapping onto something else as well, which might like, not have the same value on me. A Dragon Strike is pretty brutal. It sort of pins Babel, but on the other side of that, Elsa taking a lot of heat. Unfortunately, Fuse gets found out. Jinmu, a few too many shots landing through onto that one, and can't raise yourself, bud. The pressure coming in onto the point now, and it's a bit of a tough break for London Spitfire. Elsa's so low, but they just can't quite finish him off, and Bernard slowly but surely getting burned down, and Chengdu, it might just be the one and done. The amount of pressure that actually came out of Leaves Infrasight at the start of that to just get full info on London. That being said, London are clawing this one back. They needed to finish off Jinmu there, me thinks, but oh, yeah, even in the strong. absence of that, they finished off Late Young for a second time around, and they have that faster respawn. They're piling back onto the point, and they are slowly but surely chipping away at the Chengdu Hunters, who are eventually going to have to give this one up. They have to get Late Young. If Late Young stays alive against Graviton Surge, that's going to be the nail in the coffin. Chengdu already got two ticks in there. For sure, the Grav comes through and just cleans up, and that is going to be Chengdu capping through, but killing late young a second time. You see how much pressure there is by the way for your Velta to keep him alive. Goes for the res instantly. You have to keep late young into the wards that fight, so getting that second kill is going to be what keeps London Spitfire in the game for now. Two minutes and 45 remaining, so a bit of time for Chengdu to work with, but a lot of ultimates now available for London. Finally, this is where you can start to see some real blood being spilt, and this is where I want to see all the ults being used by London. Late Young looking to get that charge back up. That's one of the big things that you really suffer from. And we see how effective Late Young is when he pushes to that 80 plus percent. He won't need the, he won't need the charge person because Jimmy will pop the grab the dragon for the grab combo. We'll see what that happens. And 
the next couple of seconds, Shamu now. Okay, Lei Young gets pumped off the side there by the whole hog, so he doesn't benefit from his own grab. And actually, with Elsa with the primal rage, they don't get a lot out of that grab at all. Chengdu, this is a bit of a tough one. Obviously, the environmental kill unresable as well. And now Elsa going down. Jinmu quickly following means a res would be ill spent at this point, as Chengdu kind of throw a lot into that fight and get nothing for it. I don't know how effective the actual grab was coming through from Lei Young. Didn't quite get to see how many people were caught. Certainly no one died to the dragon strike. So that signature combo doesn't quite work out well for Chengdu and now they're resetting onto another comp. That's going to buy another minute worth of time. I think by the time Chengdu actually go for the game winning push, they might have to do this one in overtime. So regardless of how well London do on this defense, they're either going to commit to a completed behold or it's going to be an overtime cap and neither of those look good for Chengdu. Let's also consider the world where, honestly, before they even get to make that sort of push, Glister finds a headshot, Babel finds a catch as well. That's the kind of game plan that London can also lean on. Chengdu might not even get that opportunity for a fair fight in the closing seconds of the round. Chengdu have to squeeze out two fights. There it is. Even though Elsa's down, they got to go in, in my opinion, because they don't have a lot of time to work with. They're not going to have ultimates if they don't make plays happen. Cliston slipped once again, but don't know if that's going to be the opportunity. Yvelto only barely gets away with his life, and now Elsa's going to make his best Among impression. Yeah, Babel nearly caught it on the flyby. Fuse is able to commit the res there onto Hailey. So Chengdu, they're trying to kind of hang around this one, see if they can wait for the respawn as it works out somewhat, but they do lose time for it. This could be dangerous. Losing Clest in the Dragon Strike across the Hunters, but they're not too impacted by it. And now Spitfire are waiting for a respawn. They have a disadvantage here. Need to maybe do something about Elsa on this Wrecking Ball. Bernard It's kind of man alone on the point. Oh dear, Bernard gets bursted. And that's before Hylie can come into the rescue, but finding Yveltal is big. Any other picks the Spitfire can get will stick. And they can res Bernard. They pop Keo. Babel, Babel, look at me now as the walls of the town come crumbling down. It might just be that Spit fire are going to hold the hunters at bay even with Bernard out of the skies I think the damage has been done Cleston back in action Jinmu cannot get the blade off and with five seconds ticking down quick smart I think that's going to be it as London are going to complete themselves the hold and now they have set the stage for them to pick up Volskaya and begin this reverse sweep in earnest and there you go hanging on that is what it looks like when London Spitfire are able to get the defense rolling properly this is what King's Row C should have looked like they were able to complete the hold here and now this is London Spitfire's map this is a real good potential for them now they just have to get a good attack in there one third on to B and we're through one map down two more to go to complete that reverse sweep and for Chengdu starting to see a little bit of weakness now once you start to get some of these guys off their signature picks get Jimmu off the Hanzo that's another one of his signature picks put some on the Genji doesn't get a blade in time if he gets to pop that blade into the EMP maybe this is workable a little unsure what else is actually doing on this team because if you're just playing Winston and Wrecking Ball really Among should still be in this lineup, but now we get to finally see Chengdu on the defense. Elsa's coming into play the Sigma, just like Bernard was, and Bernard, well, he's going to stay on that Sigma for now. And that's the thing, look, you've got to maybe just take the argument that Elsa is there for what they want to play on the defense, because you're dead right. Like, on the offense, they didn't play anything that Among couldn't play. Worse, they didn't play anything that Among couldn't have himself just played better than what Elsa can, and that's no discredit to Elsa, but I mean, hmm. you're going to roll out on a Wrecking Ball? Like... Are by you kidding way, me? <laughs> by the way, Kiro so far has only been playing the Ana from what I can gather, so realistically that should be a Molly pick as well. I'm a little surprised by Chengdu's substitutions when Molly should be the best Ana on the team in either case. You know, Chengdu, uh, based on the fact they're going to be making some mistakes here, yeah, London will surely take advantage of that. No problems. Jimmu back on his Hanzo now. One of the better Hanzos in the league, in my opinion. So we'll see if he can find some value there. But Babel and Glister have started to really start performing Glister, especially on that point A. The 4K that he got, the opening headshot he gets now into late young. 23% one shot. Almost a mirror matchup here, and I really find the difference between the Zenyatta and the Ana here really interesting. Obviously, the anti-heal on the Hog is a real tough break, but at the same time, the Orb of Discord with those snipers and with that hook coming in can mean somebody with a lot of health loses it all very fast. It's also the sleep dart. A lot of sleep dart pressure has been put against Kleston. He's been the one eating all of the Ana uh, utility and for Chengdu now. Slowly starting to get at some value, but Glister... Popping ahead on 40% ult charge. Yveltal's keeping up though. For all the damage Glister does, the Mercy does heal it back in, so it will be the Infrasight traded for the Valkyrie eventually. 
Elsa takes a bit of heat and ha that means he has to back off. That means Late Young takes a bit of heat instead and the net effect is that Hunters are having to slowly but surely give away ground. Brilliant hook onto Late Young and that's what that Orb of Discord can do for you as the pull comes in. Now Elsa too. If Eltal can't go for either of those reses, it's just not safe enough. Might be able to find Elsa but honestly at this point the Hunters are hemorrhaging members. Late Young and Elsa both take the slow respawn and now Jimmu gets popped in the, in the end. If Eltal is actually the only man to walk away with his life and I don't think that's going to last much longer. That is a decent cap for the Spitfire. It's about a minute more than what the Hunters had. Five minutes 30. There's really no way now that 80.6% doesn't get capped by London Spitfire. You gotta believe. A real disaster would have to happen, especially now when we have a lot of ultimates to play with. Chengdu Hunter swapping off the composition. This is going to be fresh for them. They got nothing to work no with. They completely dry outside the Valkyrie. Oh, London Spitfire might even do it on this particular push now. A double cap could be in the works. This is definitely the best opportunity. They've already found Jinmu. That's a hot start and he was quite far forward. If Eltal could not go for that, he definitely can't if he's dead. And it looks like the London Spitfire are just going to storm the point outright. Late Young, d mech Keo feeling the heat as leave goes down in the bulk of the fight. And now London just squatting on the point with the hog as they pick off all of the respawners. Chengdu can't afford to wait for the full six at this point. Not with that little on the point and a great whole hog to keep the members off. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a match on our hands. Hughes getting on the action as well, and the Mercy even getting a kill towards the end there, and finally London Spitfire are on the board in dominating fashion as well. Like I said, Chengdu Hunters maybe uh, making some substitutions that don't end up working super well for them, and London Spitfire not complaining at all. We'll definitely yeah. take advantage of that one to be able to put the first one on the board in what we could potentially now be a reverse sweep. Two more to go. A lot of people in Hangar Night are saying three and two. I think the three and two dream currently is still alive. Yeah, I mean, we kind of said it before, right? Like, as we were at that 0-2 mark before Volsky, we're like, okay, yeah, there's there's enough here that you could put your faith in. Obviously, it's it's having that uh, reaffirmed that is more of the measure of the team, and that's exactly what we've now witnessed here. You also kind of bring up the substitutions there for Chengdu Hunters, even even considering, okay, maybe there's merit in having Elsa in so that you can run that Sigma Hog. At the same time, actually, at that point, London are running that team composition better. So, is that really meant to be what works out for you? I almost question whether maybe just sticking to the guns that, I mean, as much as you can, that were working previously might have been a bit of a difference maker, but also I really feel like London are starting to find their stride here. Yeah, especially, you know, this has been a big map for both the DPS. Oh boy. The whole team starting to really turn on now. Kliston's finding hooks. He wasn't really nailing those hooks on King's Row, but on Volsky, he is mm. getting those picks he requires. And now for London Spitfire, hope and certainly a lot of uh, potential for the next couple of maps. Yeah, so uh, pour another round uh, of tea, of course. It's still only, what, 11 in the morning over there. But at any rate, yeah, uh, stack it up, get some milk in the jug, and uh, I don't know, I don't, this is this is a complete disaster. At any rate, you got a couple of minutes to refill, refuel, and then we'll come back where maybe we'll see the rest of a reverse sweep.
like that that says hold tight because uh, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been holding on very tightly. Uh, you know, it's like a roller coaster where these first two maps have just been the lift hill. That's just amping up the tension. Now we're just coming down that first drop. We've got a taste of what's to come, but the roller coaster, my dudes, is only just getting started. And if you're enjoying the ride as much as I am, then please go ahead and subscribe, support the stream. Once again, thanks very much, of course, to Overwatch League for allowing these co-streams to happen. If you're not already subscribed to Overwatch League, of course, go ahead and subscribe to that. And uh, I'm I'm psyched to continue to bring these uh, to the fans and I hope we get to do many, many more of them. And uh, hopefully a lot more games that the London Spitfire fans will be proud of as well. More roller coasters. As to head into the playoffs here. Final match of the regular season has been a pretty good one so far in terms of the three maps that we have seen. So hopefully the last two will certainly deliver the same goods. And looking into this one, starting to look a lot more winnable. Chengdu showing a little bit more weakness, showing that they can definitely fall to London Spitfire who, you know, despite some of the rougher performances in the previous weeks, this could be where they turn it around. Your London Spitfires of the past have always had a bit of a playoff buff, and this would certainly be the right time for London Spitfire to get into that kind of groove. And I think the question that is on my mind is what kind of roller coaster are we riding right now? Like, are we riding the one that we've got here? Like, literally the one where it's just got, like, a loop and two corkscrews? Or are we, like, are we at Alton Towers? Like, are we getting on the Smiler? Like, that thing's got, uh, at one point, had the most inversions in the world. Like, are we in for that kind of ride? Are we in for all kinds of twists, turns, loops, and everything in between, right? That's what I'm kind of keen for. I want a wild ride here. We said we wanted a fun match more than anything else. And I mean, we're kind of on track for that now. I think all the fun was on King's Row in terms of depending what kind of fun you like on there. If you're <laughs> into the sort of self-pitying kind of fun, that would have been up your Which battery. I definitely am. Uh, I know. And but moving on to future maps. I mean, Havana is actually going to come up next, by the way, mm -hmm. for those that aren't aware yet. So a big sniper map. This is where I think Glister, uh, Glister rather, and Babel are going to have a really good time. If they can really pop off again, that would be certainly London's uh, pathway to victory. But uh, I, I'm very keen to see that duo go up against Jammu and Leave again because between Jammu and Leave, they've also got... A bit of a Hanzo Widowmaker duo between themselves. It could just be the battle of the two DPSs versus another two DPSs. And I believe we uh, we do actually see the substitution Molly coming back in over Keo. I didn't quite yeah. catch whether we have um, Maymung back in over Elsa. At any rate, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the gotta, sniper battle. You've got to have your best Ana player in, and that's why Molly's there. Amon coming back in for the main tank as well. If you're going to be playing Wrecking Ball, a lot of it, you might as well have your best Wrecking Ball player, and probably the best Wrecking Ball player in the league as well, be on that particular hero. Now, I do wonder, does Jimmu start on the Farah for Havana? Now, they are attacking. If they were defending, possibly, I think they start with the Farah, but de attacking first, it does actually seem like they want to go for the double sniper first. It'll be met on both ends here. Clisten and Burn are still in for the Hog Sigma combo. And now, that's not really a Flex Tank duo that I was really considering in this particular meta, but I think Burn is really starting to make it work. And if you do have a Sigma player on your team that's very confident on that pick, mm. despite the nerfs coming on through, then hell, make a make a run for it. And Burn is certainly proving his value on that pick. If it's not that, he can definitely play the Zarya as well. We've seen what he can do on that, and it's been very effective too. We've also started to see Clesten really come alive. Uh, Fuse as well, being able to match that res has been impactful. Also, I I feel like London have started really uh, getting those more unresable kills and no small part of that is Cleston getting some very high value hooks that are resulting in kills. So it does feel like London have found their groove with this particular six. And then starting very far back, you can see through the silhouettes right now, they're not really contesting too early and they do have snipers. Maybe they're just uh, not wanting to be too far in the open, but I do expect Glister and Babel to be somewhere to be able to contest and even Jimbo. Certainly expect so. Glister's already got a decent bit of alt charge in the pocket, which would imply a few more shots landed than what Leave has. Such as that one just now on Late Young. And both uh, flex supports on the Zenyatas as well. I guess for the opening long range jewels here, it makes more sense for the Zenyata right clicks to come through as well as Discord orbs. Zenyata did get a minor buff on this particular patch, but hey, Mung's going to try and do as much slow push as just he can. Does just give you a little <laughs> bit of uh, bit of a throwback to the to the free push that got them the win on King's Row as well, <laughs> where Amung just pushes on his own. He takes enough damage and he'll be forced back. Right. Just hiding behind the flat bed and he's able to roll away to safety as well. It feels criminal, but Glister's popped a headshot on to leave. That's a really high impact one. I would expect the res to come out and indeed there it is, but this does mean that Chengdu um, 
They're sort of uh, on a thread here. If any more kills come through, they're not resable. One for one. There's still a res here that could be committed onto Cleston. Indeed, there it goes down. Man advantage now to London. And Chengdu are going to have to wait around a second. By the way, the first ultimate that comes online is actually going to be Glister. That's how much damage he's done so far. Infrasight is up before anyone is even that close. I mean, hey, what's man. the next ultimate? Like 65%, 63% on Jinmu as Lee finally reaches 70. And Heimung, like you mentioned, very far in the back line. He is spotted by the way, just caught it by Hylian. and well, should really go down now to Glister, who is going to be able to receive that ball. That's a really long, uh, sort of, a long time to die, and it's honestly just lost a couple of uh, otherwise usable seconds for the Hunters. It's not like Aemung had a great way of getting out there, but by trying to stall out, maybe regroup with the team, and then going down anyway, they just lose more time rather than him just kind of, you know, rolling into the team and letting the inevitable happen. Well, silver lining is Wrecking Ball's like the fastest here in the game, so we just get back <laughs> to the point, no issues. The more kind of weird thing for Chengdu right now is actually running Wrecking Ball plus the Roadhog at the same time. That's not really like a, con like a normal, typical kind of duo happening right Right now, as Aemung's going to try and oh. do his best to contest with Callista, who, with the Infrasight, is getting so many good shots in. I mean, that that same mileage isn't being done. What it is doing, though, it is keeping Glister busy, so he's not able to put the same pressure onto Jinmu and leave, and you're seeing that come out of here, as Jinmu's been able to get quite a lot of work done. Res committed onto Bernard, but this isn't the most comfortable of positions here, as Aemung is also resed himself. So, London, they really need to lean into these ultimates, but it's going to be hard for Bernard to get this one off, and Aemung a good piling end. in. They find Bernard. Glister finally able to turn his attention to those DPSs does find his mark, but it might have already been a bit too much damage done to the Spitfire. Actually, Glister finds leave as well, and with this Dragon Strike coming out, oh, unfortunately not on the cards. The cap comes through anyway, and a late death onto Hylie, but London did at least make Chengdu pay for it big time. Oh, well, that's Glister going to be getting three to four kills once again, but unfortunately he was just too far away from his team. He spent a long time chasing Aemong while Chengdu was just winning the team fight on the objective itself. So now, Respawn to see how well he does on B. This is typically not the Widow part of the map, so perhaps Widow player makers might go to something else like a Tracer, which could actually be quite effective here. Chengdu, got a bit of momentum behind them, but no ults just yet. A little bit rough that Babel committed the Dragon Strike earlier and uh, didn't come to any effect, but they do still have that Gravitic Flux. It's the only ultimate actually available right now until these Infrasites come up, so want to see Bernard finally get one of those off. Gravitic Flux in a very tight area, such as the B point. Very effective, and Emon is just going to oh, do his best to roll through. That'll be that Rez will at least come in, like you mentioned, but Emon's still pretty deep right now. He's playing very well in terms of just keeping people busy. Ooh, okay, Jinmu ends up going down, and Fuse barely gives Emon the slip. If Eltal going for a Rez will get it, has to immediately dash out, and they can't do anything about Jinmu going down. Nice hook there, and that's the kill confirmed now as Chengdu starting to get stopped up in earnest. Plenty of kills coming in. Everybody gets one each, and for London Spitfire, they get to hold on two minutes and 14 now. It's going to be very difficult for Chengdu to work with. If they do get the cap, they probably get it in towards overtime. Unless this next push is very, very effective for them. Jimmy does have the Dragon Strike available. Should be matched by Babel in just a second as well. But this map does become difficult to cap in its entirety for C if you don't have enough work time to work with after B. All right, that's the first of those Infrasites coming out from Lee. Lister having committed his in the previous fight. So everybody's aware that they have vision on them, but Heimon goes down anyway. Dragon Strike across Babel's a little bit pinned here and a little bit of trouble, but does also have the Mercy in his back. Just in a straight one for one with the Mercies on them, and Jinmu comes out the better end of that exchange. Glister has something to say about it. Unfortunately, though, Jinmu is reasonable where Babel is not. So now London, one man down. Oh, wow. They've got a lot of work to do here as a huge whole hog pops out. They're able to finish off Cleston and Chengdu, have been able to regain all that momentum that they had just freshly lost as wow. London aren't even really getting trades here for all the ultimates they're committing. This is not the hottest Gravitic Flux out of Bernard, unfortunately, having held on to it for what is so long. It is Chengdu Hunters now come to having no ultimates left. London are only just dealing some blows back, but they're too lean on members for any extra kills to stick. Chengdu will get B. I don't know if you guys caught that at home, but that was an incredible line of play coming through from Bernard. They may lose the point here. They'll probably lose Kalisten as well, but Bernard literally denied two late Young's hooks with his shield just off a whim as well. He just knows exactly the timing of the hook. Lei Young throws a hook in there, then instantly the shield is popped by Bernard, and Lei Young can just do nothing there. Unfortunately, London Spitfire, again, will not be able to hold on to B, but they burn up enough time that Chengdu probably struggle and see here. Two minutes and five is typically not enough time to cap C in its entirety, unless you get a lot of momentum for it. Creating 
some kind of hold here is what keeps London in this. We saw them accomplish that on Volskaya by stopping Chengdu from fully capping B. They kept the door open for themselves. Now you see Amung barreling down the middle as the flanks were set up on the side, leaving late young make their move. They immediately find Fuse and Babel. And that's already a tough break for London. They have to just give up a chunk of space here. Bernard goes for the slow death to stop the cart from getting too much free ground. But London, this has kind of been cracked open just a little bit. It's going to be hard now to dislodge Chengdu. There's a lot of progress as well. Chengdu oh, to do one minute that they have. Still dead. survived so far, but that being said, Late Young with the whole hog has got to at least knock Leston off that map, and London desperately need to get some counter trades because look at where the card is. It's about to reach the end. Cleston needs to live, and he needs to come through. He needs to use his ult. they got a man at each door, and by man, I mean it's a Dragon Strike on one, and it's Among on the other. Cleston goes out just to stall the card, but I don't think anyone else can get there. Bernard dives for it, but they just held at bay. You've got to credit the Chengdu Hunters for keeping a lid on London there, but I mean, there's also some things I kind of end up questioning, like seeing Molly and Cleston kind of, uh, sorry, Highly and Cleston hanging off the side there where they're very vulnerable to the Wrecking Ball barreling through that passage, potentially knocking you off. If that doesn't do it, then it's the whole hog that ends up getting both of them just way too late. Yeah, I... That uh, It was a bit rough. I don't think... I don't think London left as much space as they should have if they were just waiting for respawn. I think it was just a good play coming through from Amung and Late Young to identify that positioning. You have, first of all, Amung pushing both Cleston and Hyde a little bit further out, and then Late Young confirming with the whole hog there. And it's such an important kill to Cleston as well, because if Cleston survives and he gets a chance to use his own whole hog in a situation where Molly is not playing the Anna, there's no sleep dart to cancel him through. Late Young would have to land the hook to actually cancel that whole hog from Cleston. Cleston pushes everyone away, and Chuck Two Hunters make it, makes it very difficult for them to be able to actually confirm that cap, but when London Spitfire backs against the wall, Cleston even has to change onto a wrecking ball just and contest a cart, and I guess it's better than a C9, but he has to lose the whole hog for that, the only final win condition that London actually still had, and I said Chengdu were not going to be able to really cap C without a lot of momentum, and they got a ton of momentum, they were not stopped at all throughout that entire C push. And that was the really unfortunate thing about it because London had honestly laid so much solid groundwork on A and subsequently B. They had held Chengdu for a chunk of time each time they capped with only about a minute left and they were looking a little bit down to the wire but end up having about a minute on the clock. That being said, very matchable here for London if they can get some high momentum pushes through either A or B. So no fire shenanigans early on for Jim Moo. He's setting up for potential B play as well. This took from late Yang, so the opening couple of plays from Chengdu Hunter is not quite connecting, but also no massive bursts of damage from Glista either. Remember, Glista had an infrasight nearly instantaneously above anybody else in the entire server on their own defense. London just taking their time, getting that push. You can see Among. Just waiting for the opportunity to barrel in, and London's London's Among senses are tingling. They're like, let's not push the cart any further just yet. Among is going to try and do something if we do, and instead they've sniffed out his position. So Among's not quite going to get that free interrupt. Instead, he's in a bit of trouble here. Eats an anti heal now is slept, and London just waiting for the hook cooldown. There we go. Going to pop Among. Not particularly resible if London can ro rotate back around to the cart in quick fashion, or maybe even looking to bait out a Veltile heal. I don't think that's going to work though. So this is the problem: is because you're not playing late on Zarya anymore. You can't say Among. Typically, what would happen is he would just get Zarya Bubble. He'd probably still stay alive there. He'd be absolutely fine. They can't play the same way if you're not supporting the Wrecking Ball properly. And this is why this particular composition for Chengdu might not be as good. And while that's one kill, Yvelto probably does raise that one, though. Yeah, and the unfortunate thing is in all that, they took a long time to rotate back around to the cart, and Among is actually back. But Cleston, he's got the Nanibus in his back. He wants to go in on this. Among has to come in to rescue Late Young, but that just means he sacrifices his own life. Fable goes down, but he's very resible. So, man advantage here to London. London as Babel pops out that Dragon Strike, raking across Chengdu Hunters, trying to dislodge a bit of their positioning, actually just up towards Late Young as it happens, but it's cart push happening and London keeping the pressure on. Oh dear. Well, the DPS is coming alive a little bit for Chengdu right now. Glista certainly needs to find a trade Ooh, somewhere. That's a hook. Late Young gets Bernard down, and despite Cleston doing his best on the whole hog, I don't know if it's going to be enough just yet. I think you mean Cleston doing his best in. This is going to be able to slip out of this one for the time being, but it has allowed the res to come through on late young Among just applying that forward pressure, and this time hasn't paid for it with his life. So now Callista gets popped by Jinmu and feels like winning that sniper battle is what's keeping it in for Chengdu about now, and uh, London 
having to reset fully at this point. That's a little bit of a tough break for them. There was a moment there where if they'd maybe picked up just one more kill or had both Among and Late Young dead at the same time, they could have maybe got that cap across. And I think what's happening here is despite being able to punish Among, they're not quite winning the duels versus both Jimmu and Lee right now, who will both have ultimates online fairly soon, as the rest of Chengdu Hunters already have three in the bag. So Among just needs to address his play style a little bit, play a little bit safer. This is still very aggressive. He can still be punished, but he is also just keeping Glista busy. And if Glista is spending a lot of time chasing Among, he's not shooting Jim Moo and leave. And that's the sort of impossible decision he keeps forcing them into. Do you go ahead and commit a sleep dart, an anti-heal, put Glista on me, or do you try and put the pressure forward? And London, they've decided now, pressure forward. Let's not keep wasting time on Among, but oh, it means that Chengdu pounce quick, smart. That's exactly what they want out of you. They want you to push forward. They want Among <laughs> to be able to come around the backside of your team. They want to be able to get those shots across onto Fuse, and this is an unmitigated disaster, unfortunately, for the Spitfire. They do at least take late young down he will be able to get rezzed here i dare say they find jinmu as well so cleston at least makes it hurt before he fully goes down but it also means he now has to tank the long walk back from the respawn and glister is still not in a safe position here the other problem is even if you do something ignoring among he's just going to come for your back line he takes glister down there while he's a little bit distracted a lot of ultimates in play for London Spitfire, but not a lot of time. Just the 12 seconds remaining. This has to be the push that works when they have to get yeah. past two of the defensive ultimates of Molly and Yavalto as well. So the Spitfire have the work cut out for them. I'm looking at a burn out for this one. If you can land a great flux, that can be a game winner. We said there was that need for that big momentum push for the London Spitfire. Certainly it hasn't been there on A, but if they can cap this over, it's still possible on B, but they need to make the magic happen about now. Minefield having already been committed and now dealt with Among looking to get deep on the back line. <laughs> just going where yeah, it wants. No, nothing for it this first time around. And again, London in that impossible situation. Do you take the fight on the front side? Do you risk Among coming into the back of you and picking some members off? But that's Molly found out by Babel as Bernard finds his mark on Jinmu and Eveltal. He can't res both. He has to go for Molly. Has to get that transcendence in. London keeping the pressure on around the cart. This is Leave in a really tight spot. Don't know if he gets out of this one alive. Don't know if Cleston's going to live though. Barely getting the Mercy into the mix there at the last minute to keep him alive as the kills become overwhelming to get that cap across but B's got to be speedy if London want to be in for a chance here. Well London now they have a bit of momentum behind their backs. Chengdu didn't get to use that transcendence that might have been able to save them and Chengdu now looking to see what they can do on B. London Spitfire though two minutes and 12 seconds they need to speed through B if they want a good shot of getting over towards C. Now we're not going to be too I guess critical of how much time they can actually get on this map. The goal is just to cap at all. If they can get into overtime, that'll be enough. You just gotta get to the time bank here, and that may just be a big enough challenge as it is. Among is still just keeping Glister busy here, but as it comes further and further into the back line, Among risks more and more, and oh, he gets out. That's so brutal. That's what and highly goes down. Cleston as well, and this is the thing, Among is just the grand distraction. Hey. Either you go all in on killing him and then try and turn around for a 6v5. Or you need to outpace something in the main trunk of the fight. He doesn't even have a Zarya bubble anymore, and somehow he's still just wrecking havoc. He's Among literally plays Wrecking Ball like a 600 HP Tracer at the moment. He's so difficult to punish at the best of times. Cleston desperately needs to land a hook on him. Highly desperately needs to land Sleep Darts, Bionades, everything, because otherwise you're not going to get the kill. Glister wants to maybe even attempt to chase him down as his own Tracer. As we're now down to a minute 10, so nearly half the time we started with on B expired, and not a lot of progress to show for it just yet. Still not being that momentum push, but oh, late young. HP. Yeah, he gets forced off the high ground. Okay, he does go down, and that's not an easy position for Eveltal to get into. So this is a good start for London. They also throw out the Dragon Strike here just to try and slow down the offense. So again, Among is hanging <laughs> around the back hit. line. It's like, do we <laughs> deal with it? What do we you do can't about deal it? With them. Glister's got to try and go for it. At least Cleston getting kills on the front line means Among isn't getting as much mileage this time around. And actually, that's a transcendence kind of forced because Molly was kind of stuck off alone under the guns of Cleston. Puts out the whole hog. Doesn't get a whole lot for it, unfortunately, but it's keeping the pressure on now as Chengdu all having oh, to cluster okay. around the middle part of the fight. So, man, Babel and Glister can't catch a break from Among here. And eventually, it just becomes overwhelming. I mean, they were addressing 
passing him so well in the early parts of Havana, and it feels like all of that has been lost now across the late stage of A and coming into B. Well, the problem is, I mean, B has just got so much high ground to play with. Ten seconds to go now. Burner, Glister, and Glister still alive, but they're trying to dash onto the card itself. Glister needs to touch in time. They have to Can they get there? Rolling. I don't think they're going to get there. It's just a bit too far a walk, and it's a bit of a heartbreaking way for it to close out because, again, we sort of revisit that situation where on C... I mean, things just went so well for Chengdu. Like, if it, I mean, everything prior to that, London had set themselves up for success. It's a shame to not see that get uh, get I... sort of um, get turned into that success. And then on the attack as well, they looked like they were coming out the gate so hot. They had Chengdu's number. They were dealing with Among. They were dealing with the game plan, and then that all just kind of fell to custard. They, they were mostly dealing with Among. And here, here's the problem as well: it's like A ends up being the issue here for London Spitfire, not B, not C. Like, yeah, sure, they didn't cap on B, but B is a symptom of A not giving you enough time to yeah. work with on B itself. And I mean, you just saw how much time got lost on A, unfortunately. And Chengdu, you know, they weren't really stopped up that much on A. I think B was far more successful for London Spitfire in terms of defense, where the actual time was lost on the offense over there. But A Among is just so difficult to play against. And as a team in the Overwatch League, like how much time are you ever going to dedicate to just trying to countering A Among? I'm not talking about in the game itself. I'm talking about in theory, in scrims, in practice. It's almost like you need to come in versus Chengdu with a hard wrecking ball counter or you lose to Among on a map like this where he's so annoying to deal with like I said 600 HP Tracer if you try and kill him you can't because it's too much HP if you don't kill him and you're in the middle of a fight he just snipes down Glister or Hylia or one of your backliners he just walks in there and mm. just completely destroys one and then walks away with his life anyway so super frustrating to deal with and you can just see how f infuriating it is to play against <laughs> someone that's that good on wrecking ball and that's why he's the best wrecking ball in the league it's just it's just what he does yeah and I guess we've found out what kind of roller coaster to be riding as well. It's the one that we've got here, not the one that you guys have there, where it's like the one loop and then it's like, oh, we're back at the station already. Oh, well, uh, that was fun. Do we get to go a second time? Nope, back in the queue. All right, then. But look, it was still a roller coaster and it was still fun. It was better than just, I don't know, like sitting on the merry-go-round. So all things considered, I think that was kind of what we wanted out of today in a way. We had an interesting match. We had a fun match. There was some real glimmers of hope there for London and they honestly are looking in the best shape they have for a while. There's that soft playoff buff that I guarantee you is going to start kicking in. Like, it's got to, surely. And and I think there's a lot of promise here for the Spitfire in general. Who's to say uh, how things are going to go for them into the playoffs and through the last parts of the season. But at any rate, this has been a solid match. Let's go ahead and catch up with our guys on the ground once again in London. How are things looking there, Ian? How's everyone holding up? We're not really sad, are we, guys? Yeah. It's all right. We're this fine. Look, that, <laughs> welcome back to London. We're live. Uh, look, that did not go to plan. We, that, is, that marks the end of, of London Spitfire's campaign here. But it's time to look to the future, isn't it? Um, we had a good time here today anyway. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. We love these watch parties here live in London. And by the way, shout out to everyone, Pixie, smashing it over there in New Zealand. Uh, let's have a conversation with... One of the fans here that we haven't spoken to yet is Rebecca! <laughs> Rebecca, how was that experience for you? Uh, well, I'm glad we had the NHS because my blood pressure is very high right now. <laughs> but um, no, it, it was quite, quite sad. But It was, wasn't it? Yeah. But what positives would you take from the season as a whole? When you look back on how Spitfire have performed, give us some thumbs up. Uh, I mean, we got some good rookies. We got some good players. Um, it's it's nice to see them grow as a team. I mm. don't know. It's been fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. That's, do you want to see some? Do you want to see some changes before we resume? Do you want to? What, what do you want to see happen with no. Spitfire? Oh, you, you want to no. see the team? Oh, I love you want to see the team grow. No. Is that? No. Yeah, I think. I think there probably will be changes, and it will be sad, but mm. um, I think. I don't know. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Rebecca, I always like to get a bit of insight into how you became a fan. So yes. tell us your Overwatch League experience, how it all started for you, and how you became a London Spitfire fan. Well, um, this is quite embarrassing, but I was originally a New York fan. Oh! oh! Yeah. <laughs> Until I came to the Hangar 9 viewing party. Hey! Um, <laughs> uh, She's back. Uh, <laughs> Uh, about like the start of season t t 
who mm -hmm. uh, I started coming, and I've made some really good friends. Yeah. And I got so much free merch, I was like, might as well become well, a Spitfire. Well, I mean, you are dripping in Spitfire <laughs> yeah. right now. I, I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, for anybody watching who might be thinking, you know what, I would love to come to one of these watch parties. I would love to just be a London Spitfire fan. What yeah. would you say is good about it? Um, honestly, just the people. I've made loads of really good friends. Mm -hmm. um, there's free pastries here. They're really nice. nice. Yeah, 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 I've been eyeing them up all morning. They yeah. are. Chef's kiss. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just community, I'd say, yeah. is the best thing about Hangar 9. Um, none of my friends outside of this play video games, really, or watch the Overwatch League. Yeah. So it's nice to just meet like-minded people. For sure. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Take a seat. <laughs> and I love your glasses, by the way, as well. Uh, Taylor, where's Taylor? There should be a Taylor in here. Would you like to come and join me for a second, Taylor? Yes. <laughs> Taylor, you are our uh, London Spitfire encyclopedia. You are our Overwatch League extraordinaire. I'm going okay. to call you. Um, let's be honest for a second. What do you want to see change? Um, well, Rebecca was very kind here, but what do you want to see change? <laughs> this did not, it did not go to plan this season. So no. you'd like to think that changes are going to happen. I think we need a bit of a shake-up. I think the roster may be a little bit too big. I mean, we've got great flexibility, but I think we didn't use it to its fullest potential. I think maybe, I love J-Mac, he's great. I think maybe an upgrade in the main tank role might oh, be in you order. Say, you want to say bye-bye to J-Mac? Not necessarily get rid of him, but maybe... Bench, bench him, you said bench him. Maybe get a veteran in, someone who can okay. teach him a bit more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's the only th improvement I Isn't think. Isn't he kind, by the way? <laughs> uh, I think we've got very much bright stars who are very much up and coming. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's definitely rookie of the year potential and stuff like that within our squad. So yeah, I'm, I'm, that's about my only. Are there any players out there in the league that you would love to see come and join your roster? Ooh. Um, if Arns would want to come over, that would be great. <laughs> Arns, if you're watching, uh, <laughs> we love you. Um, I think probably Fearless. Of the Shanghai Dragons, he's a really good main tank. Mm -hmm. to kind of take J Mac under his wing, yeah. almost. That might be quite good. So yeah. So do you think that next year is the year where we go back to 2018? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I think there's definitely as long as there's potential. Some I think I think, but I don't think we need to do too many changes. I think too many changes could spell negative results. I think we just need to make the right amount of changes. If Ooh. that makes any sense. Okay. So not not, not a complete overhaul. No. Okay. Uh, who would you want to give a shout out to when it comes to this season? Who will you stand out MVPs for London Spitfire that you would love to see stay as part of the roster next season? I've got to go with Glister. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's How did I know you were going to say? <laughs> maybe it's because everyone here has got him as their wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. I think he's, he's brilliant. He managed to perform a flat deadlift on Junker Town, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. he's, he's an overall brilliant player. There isn't a hero. I don't think we can, we've seen him not be able to play. Yeah. Um, I think he's a prophet in the making. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. A prophet in the making. Now, that is high praise, Taylor. Now, I, I've got some high praise for you, actually, because you've blown my mind. If, without you, I'd know half as much of the, as, the, as the things I know about Overwatch so far, because you are an uh, encyclopedia, like <laughs> I said. So, I'm going to knight you. You've been, oh, shall I, shall I bow? <laughs> is that no, no, this is a cape. It's actually a hoodie, but I'm going I'm to pretend it's a cape, and I'm going to make you our official London Spitfire stat man. <laughs> <laughs> Give a bit of a spin. <laughs> Taylor, you're a legend. Thanks for joining us Thank here. Thank you very much, mate. No, we have one out. Woo! Woo! Taylor! <laughs> Isabella, would you like to come and join us again? I love her. This is the thing, right? If you, if you come to these watch parties and you just come and stand here, you automatically get a round of applause. So it's, it's well worth it. It's nice. Coming. And it's, it's a nice, nice feeling to get an ovation for doing nothing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, welcome again. Thank you. What would you, as the, because Oak isn't here right now, what is yeah. your role at Hanging Hand, by the way? So, I am a head game maker, so mm -hmm. what I do is I come to these amazing watch parties, get to enjoy it myself, yep. but also make sure that everybody is comfortable, happy, um, making sure that, yeah, everything goes smoothly, and uh, just chatting with you guys as well. So, you've been a, a Spitfire fan for a while now. Yes and you will know what you want to see change going into next season. Yes. How honest would you say you are and how brutal are you willing to be right now? 
Flat oh, iron. I can be as much as you want. Well, let's get brutal. Yeah. I want to get brutal. Um, Our boss has just said, go for it. So, go for it. <laughs> so we've had clearance. So as long as there's no bad language, let's get brutal. No, no. no. The, uh, honestly, I don't have anything really bad to say. It's, I mean, they've been thrown in it, in a sense, because it's a brand new roster. And, you know, they're going up some, against some big titans. Yeah. Um, I think there are a few small changes that need to be made. I agree with the other fans. Um, but really not that much, and it really needs to be calculated, because I think Glister's great, our healing is great. I think we need a bit of work in the tank section, mm -hmm. but, and also playing on the point. Um, <laughs> so maybe getting them a map, and just being like, that, that, that's where you should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But otherwise, I mean, I'm pretty positive about it, and this game especially, uh, brought out some incredible plays. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if you heard us, but we were, we were excited. Loud. We were yeah. pretty loud. I mean, my throat hurts. Yeah. Um, what but were some of the most exciting moments for you then this morning? Just seeing Babel, just uh, Glister also with some headshots. And as Penny said, the reses. I've never been so excited for a res in my life. <laughs> Apart from when I'm playing and I get resed once every 10 maps. <laughs> um, but no, it's been a pretty exciting game. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of promise with these guys. So I think few small changes, a bit more practice, and I think we've got it in the bag. But you want, you want to see some new members come into the roster? Um, or do you want to stay as we are? I'm kind of happy with how we are. Okay. Um, I, I kind of like everybody, so yeah. Good, all right. Well, I just want to say to anybody watching, we have Spitfire fans worldwide. If you don't follow us already on social media, make sure you do. We are at Spitfire across the board. And look, we're going to be hopefully doing more and more of these events, which means you stay there, Isabella. Oh, sorry. You stay there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't leave my side. Uh, more and more of these events and making you feel like you are here with these watch parties with us. Um, but there is nothing better than actually being here. So if you are ever coming across or you are in the area, we'd love it if you would come and get involved, if people want to get involved. Uh, a good way to do that is to be part of the Hanging Out fan club. Yes. How do we make that happen? So we've got obviously all the social media. Mm -hmm. um, but from Which is? Our, so Twitter, Hangar 9, uh, Facebook as well, we've got Facebook groups, um, Instagram as well, London, Hangar 9. Mm -hmm. um, and just from there, you can get a link to our Discord. We're all very friendly. We're all very happy to have you. Yeah. And yeah, we'll let you know first about any events. Um, and hopefully there'll be a lot more events because they've been amazing. Yeah. And yeah, we're, we're here for you. So come and join us. Fantastic. Give it up for Isabella, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, like she said, lovely. As Isabella said there, we are hoping to host more of these, and it is well worth your time. If you, if you can't be here, you should definitely watch along just for the atmosphere. We have lots of fun with the fans, and if you can come, like Rebecca said, we've got some fantastic pastries. Um, so do join us, and it's been a pleasure. Next year's the year, right? Make some noise. Yeah. 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 Next year is the year. I've been... Ian Chambers, thanks for having me. We're crossing back over now to New Zealand with the amazing Avril and Pixie for a little bit more analysis. Take it away, you dapper duo. Cheers, Ian. And uh, again, yeah, good to see that everybody's had such a great time. Uh, obviously, not just uh, not just today, but for the whole season. Uh, really bit of a shame, I guess, to not see Oak out today for you know what might be the last of these for a while, but still uh, great energy in the crowd there. And uh, you know, uh, it's, it's great to see all the dedicated fans. You kind of mentioned it as well. All the people who are also tuning in online. It's not just the fans in person. Not everyone is able to make it out to uh, these events, but uh, there's a whole lot of them out there. And that's exactly what this is for. And if you've just come across this, if you're a, a spit Fire fan and you want to be assured of seeing more of these sorts of things, definitely go ahead and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed to the Overwatch League, go ahead and subscribe to that. And of course, thanks to the Overwatch League for making these co-streams possible. It's so cool to be able to bring something more directed mm -hmm. to the fans of that specific team. I think that really sort of changes the energy of the match. I know that I've definitely had a, a, a much more fun time with this sort of game than what I would otherwise have if this is just sort of your, your bog standard run of the mill affair. No, this is very much a directed for the fans experience and uh, it's always a great time. And it's, it's, by the way, you know, it's not quite over for London Spitfire either. The season does continue. Playoffs is just around the corner. The regular season may now be over. This is the final regular season game for them. But now that we head into playoffs, it will be the journey to try and make top two there. We're trying to just make any sort of deep playoffs run for the London Spitfire. So if you want to make sure you miss, you don't want to miss any of those future games. You want to make sure you're going to catch all the rest of the Overwatch League 2020 postseason, or rather the uh, playoffs matches. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you head to the link in the chat 
as well and once more subscribe to our watch league to be able to continue supporting all the teams and especially london spitfire so yeah thanks to your watch league thanks to hangar nine thanks to all the london spitfire fans for being exceptionally good fans as well high spirits here and hopefully you will be able to have some uh, exciting games to finish yeah. off the season with yeah and of course uh then there's looking forward to next year as well because it doesn't just end here there's a whole yep. lot of london spitfire on the road or indeed the runway ahead but for today uh we are taxiing back to the hangar now so thanks very much for tuning in i've been your captain matt pixie carol co-pilot kevin avril walker we hope you have enjoyed your flight with us and we hope you choose to fly with us again next time